creatures of the night, driven by insatiable thirst. This ancient evil is now a modern industry, backed by big money. Kate, she's young, she's in love, she's the next victim. Thirst. Specialists in abduction, brainwashing, and murder. Welcome to the Brotherhood, Miss Davis. Not me. Their human farm is a living nightmare where science goes mad. I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Welcome to Prattle World. I am your host, the ever-amazing, ever-spectacular Spider-Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best-kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to Secret Ball Stories, where I invite guests to count down a personal top five list in high-fidelity fashion. And we've got a heck of a heck of a list today. And uh, and we've got two uh, blood-suckingly good uh, guest today. They are back. We did our Stephen King top five adaptations last year, and Paul has pulled out another diamond idea, and we're doing uh, top five vampire movies. And speaking of blood-sucking parasites, Dennis is also here. <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic podcast. A lot of puns coming up, and hopefully this podcast doesn't suck. Oh, look at you there. Straight in there, straight in there. But uh, we, we've got a lot to cover, guys. So, you know, this is it. Top five vampire movies. That's all you need to know. If they're, they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily have to be vampires per se, but they have to at least drink blood. That's that's my kind of cut off of, of the idea of a vampire. They can be human. What about leeches? Leeches. Um, well, you're leeching off me all the time, uh, Dennis. So oh, we all know that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is not a lie. Uh, <laughs> right, anyway, let's get started. So, top five vampire films. I'm going to let Paul go first. Uh, welcome back to the show, Paul. Um, why don't oh, you kick you. us off with a with a killer vampire flick? Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me back on the show. It's been a year. Um, okay, so this was really hard. I, I, you know, to to choose because. Uh, it was my idea, but then I found it really difficult to pick five. Getting stuck straight in at number five, my number five, Underworld. And no, it's not the uh, underwear shop from Coronation Street. It's 2003's <laughs> Underworld is um, vampires and werewolves, because I like a bit of werewolf. Um, we got uh, Kate Beckinsdale as Celine, um, who is a, a vampire death dealer hunting the lichens. And basically, a, a long-standing war, there's, 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 there's all sorts of law behind that that's Great characters such as Bill Nye as, as Victor, uh, an ancient one who gets woken too early, and there's all sorts of family intrigue there. There's there's there's, there's werewolves that are good and werewolves that are bad. You know, there's all sorts of story story plot plot twists there, and then there's a, there's a human that's involved in, for some reason that the, the werewolves want him. And I'm not going to spoil it for people because I think a lot of people should go and go and watch these films. Um, but uh, there's a there's a there's a really strange. Um, Sort of fascination with it, with it, with it, with a human that then becomes her love interest in the film, and uh, but the the wells after me. Oh, it all becomes clear, but lots of action in it, lots of uh, stylish gothic scenery. There's there's some great uh, music. The the, the, vamp, the, the, the soundtracks are rocks. Uh, it's quite atmospheric and stylish. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I'll be honest. I haven't seen Underworld in years, probably since it came out. Mm. Uh, but I remember quite enjoying it, and I like the premise, the idea behind it. And I think a lot of other films have kind of got got that idea and kind of run with it as well. The vampire werewolf rivalry. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a good choice. But I do I do feel feel like it gave birth to a lot of bad kind of 
films after it, all the leather clad kind of vampires and gun yeah. toting. I think it's a little bit like Blade. It's of that, of that era, isn't it? So yeah, um, it feels like that, and it feels like it spins off a little bit off the Matrix. And kind of oh yeah, stylized. It's all sort of that. I think it's sort of around that era, wasn't it? I love Underworld. Yeah. Michael mm-hmm. Corvinus. That's it, Michael Corvinus. You know. Uh, you got Michael Sheen, Michael Sheen's in it as, as, yeah. as, as uh, Lucian. <laughs> second, second time he's played a vampire. Is it? Now? Twilight. Wait, is it, no, he's a werewolf in this, isn't he? He's a werewolf. Oh, yeah. But yeah, he he's, a werewolf, he's, yeah, he's a werewolf. Yeah. I'm just seeing if you found out. Um, he's quite, he is quite sexy in this, Michael Sheen. I've never really I, seen him as a sexy guy, but when I saw him in I, that, I was like, yeah, he, he can pull off the sexy. I, I, I just can't hero. go over Selena in a sprayed on outfit. It is tight. It which is tight. seems in the second one that it's sprayed on even more. <laughs> and it's directed by her husband, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember his can't remember his name off the top of my head. Yeah. But she's, um, a, she's an English rose. Yeah, I like I like Kate Beckinsale. She's she's good in you know in most stuff, and she's very very beautiful. Um, I, like I would the blue eyes and teeth. I might do a binge of Underworld. I think because I've not seen it in so long. I think I might do all of them. Just just have a good old I think, binge. I think there's four, at least four, isn't there? I've seen the first three. There's Underworld, Underworld, Awakening Two, whatever it's called. Then there's Rise of the Lycans. Then there's Awakening, and then there's Blood Wars or Bloodline. So which is the see. which is the worst one, the last one. Well, they can't, um, they can't they can't be worse than those Resident Evil films, so uh, they're pretty awful. And, uh, um, one thing with well, the vampire films, they definitely seem to like a spin-off but, and, and a tend to degrade in quality. Mm, so. I think I think that's anything. Sorry, Dan, I think, I, David. Uh, then I cut you up there. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Um, I think that's a, an excellent choice. And I think that does come up in the listener comments, Paul. So you are not alone in that opinion. But yeah, I I, uh, I think they kind of flesh out the world. It's very interesting. Mm. Um, but again, I'm, I'm struggling to remember it because it has been some time since. I think it came out like 20, 21 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 2003. They're, they're all on Netflix. Oh, they? So I, binged, okay. I binged them the other week. Oh, okay. Good. I'll That's get on why that. I know he's called Michael Corvinus. You know, then what can I say? <laughs> I've just plucked that from the air. <laughs> Michael Corvinus, and all she wants is that Michael Corpinus. Well, she, yeah, and she may get it. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? No, we're not going to spoil it. We're not going to spoil it. <laughs> uh, not, we'll, no. we'll let you, we'll let you see see that, that what what occurs in Underworld for the Michael Corpinus. Uh, anyway, uh, Dennis, what is your first pick? For your well, vampire flicks, mine's mine's a, a, a little bit different to Paul's. Um, I've gone for a girl walks home alone at night. Okay, all right. Which is a 2014 American Persian language horror western film. That's a that's certainly a mix of genres there. Yeah, it's it's the first Iranian vampire western. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's, that's fantastic. It's it's very arty. It's not a movie that I would tend to recommend for people to watch. Like, if someone says, uh, what, what film should you watch tonight? I wouldn't say A Girl Walks Home at Night because I think you have to be in a certain frame of mind to watch it. It's shot entirely in black and white. You can you can see there's um, undertones of, like, David Lynch in there, you know, Razorhead. There's lots of Once Upon a Time. You know, a lot of it was, 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 lit, was lit just by streetlights. So it's it's everyone's got these long kind of um, wonderful wonderful shadows, but I would tell you what the plot is, but I don't really know. Um, it's it's a bit it's a bit different. Basically, they're in a fictional uh, Iranian town um, called Bad City, which looks very grim. There's like there's oil being. Um, produced there, and there's lots of dead bodies in a, in a ditch. And there's the two the, the two main characters away from the vampire. There's two main characters. One of them, uh, father and son. Son's uh, father is a heroin addict. Son goes and gets him his his fix. And then you've got the 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 vampire. It has long shots of like balloons and things. Um, but it just the style of it, I I absolutely love and. I like the the way it's kind of it's shot, so you can see um, lens flare off the streetlights and things. The the effects, uh, you know, are, are cheap and cheerful. Don't really see this. It's not really scary. Like it, it was f- part funded by gra- crowdfunding in, in Indiegogo, so it's one of these. But you know, the directors then gone on and done lots of other things. It's a female director as well. Um, didn't do anything 
at the box office at all, but it's become somewhat of a cult favourite. But it's not your typical vampire movie. For instance, she's um, a vampire on a skateboard. And the best thing, because she wears like a cloak and um, head headscarf, and she's going down the street on a surf on a, on this um, skateboard with her cloak blowing in the breeze. Um, there's there's lots of kind of it's like lots of different genres all put into one. Mm. But it, I w- it's very much for me, I think, a Western influence. And the the main guy character is very much James Dean in it. Um, from the opening seconds when it shows him leaning against a barn and the the, the letters come up and it's that Western font for the, for the movies and things. So I like it. I like it a lot, but I would never recommend it to everybody because I because I think it's a bit too art house. There's there's a 10 minute scene in it when a woman dances with a balloon. It, it, it to be right it, to me it doesn't damage the movie because it's because it's because it's foreign language and it's it's subtitled. Mm-hmm. So the fact there's not a lot of dialogue in it doesn't for me doesn't take anything away from it. But I've read online quite a few people don't, don't like the kind of pause the long pauses between conversations and things. Mm-hmm. But no I I I think it's great, you know, the you know, I rec- I I was recommended to watch it. I bought the comic since. Would recommend you to watch it. But as for your wider audience, I think it's it's a bit left field. But I think I think if people go in with an open mind, mm-hmm. realizing it's it's an art house movie, it does not, sa- it lo- does sound like an acquired taste. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not it's not the Lost Boys. No. Um, no, and to kind of go into that with that kind of mindset on, it's beautifully shot. It is so nice, you know. They, they made this. It's filmed in California, which is weird because it's a um, Persian Iranian production, um, produced by Elijah Wood, filmed in um, California, pretending to be somewhere else. Which so it's really weird. So it's, it's 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 a foreign language movie, but filmed in the states with a British director, and so it's 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 a lot in there. Yeah, but I think that that comes across in the movie. But I I like it. Um, and there you I go. Do, yeah, do you like the idea of of exploring the idea of a like a Muslim vampire? I think that's really interesting. I think there's there's definitely something there that could be really explored. So yeah, I'll I will definitely have to check that out. And th- there's a there's um there's a cat in it, which is kind of used as um um a, a way for the two main characters to connect. So the vampire and um Ashash, I think he's called, um to connect through the cat basically because they both like the cat. I think that's really clever because these two characters have nothing in common at all. One's a really old female vampire who likes to skate around the place and he's supplying his um, dad with heroin from a guy who wants to beat him up all the time. Yet the cat is almost like a conduit for them to kind of become friends. You think you'll check that one out, Paul? I certainly do. It's on my to-do to watch list. I've put a, I put a bunch of these on uh, that uh, we've been messaging each other and that one I hadn't seen. There's so many to watch. Um, there is. There, yeah, trust look, me, look, yeah. It do, I saw. I watched the trailer. It looks. It looks. It does look really good, actually. It looks. Um, it looks well shot and, and atmospheric just from the trailer. So I think I will be giving that. There one. we go. So check out uh, the girl walks her home alone at night. Is that right? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a title I could easily get wrong, uh, but I didn't. Uh, speaking of titles, here's a simple one. Mine is Thirst from 1979. And uh, if you're on my Patreon, much like Paul Meller is, you'll know how much I love Ozploitation. I love uh, Australian filmmaking. It is the absolute balls. I love it. And this is an Australian vampire movie, which sounds so bizarre, but I, I love it. It's basically the tagline for this movie was, the ancient evil of vampirism is now a modern industry. And vampires have basically taken over the world. There's this group called the Brotherhood. And it never really implies whether the vampires themselves are supernatural. It implies that they're long-lived and healthy from drinking blood. But it never says 100% if they're like one way or another. And they are after a a young lady called Kate because she is the uh, descendant of uh, Elizabeth Bathory who were uh, known as the Bloody Countess, that Bloody Countess, uh, who obviously drank the blood of virgins and uh, tried to stay young because she thought that is what and is how it worked. That's what I do. 
Yeah, of course. Every time, every time I'm round at yours, you're bathing in virgin's blood. You need exactly. to, you need to cut that out, Dennis. It's, uh, it's too much. It's far too much. Um, but what I quite like about this idea, I wanted something where the vampires were like, because often they're they're depicted as these outcasts or loners. I wanted mm. one where they were basically in charge, and this is it. Um, they have these these human blood farms, which are really disturbing. And I think there is a lot they're trying to say in this film, maybe about the meat industry and veganism, um, because they literally call these humans blood cows and they're draining them, they're drugged, you know, and they're walking around. And they basically want this group, this brotherhood, want Elizabeth to kind of lead them or be their figurehead because of her descendancy from Elizabeth Bathory. But she, obviously, like a sensible human being, she's not into this at all. She's not interested. She's basically kidnapped. And, um, you know, she's in love with this guy and she's pulled away from, from them. And they all kind of want a piece of her either sexually or power wise or they want something over her. And the whole film it involves her being brainwashed and slowly but surely the brainwashing affects her mentally. And there's some really great filming techniques and perspectives and shots and cinematography that just make this a total like mindfuck film. And, you know, it's still got a level of realism. It's not as arty as, as some of the ones out there. But the the scenes where there's kind of stuff that happening that shouldn't really be happening or it's unbelievable, you're like, is it real? Has this experience been real? Is she, what is she seeing? What is she experiencing? Is she becoming a vampire? Has she got actual teeth? Has she got implants? You know, it's all kind of up in the air. And uh, some really brutal deaths in it towards the end as well. But I found it really fun, really interesting. I liked the perspective. I liked the kind of things it was saying. Um, and and the fact that it kind of, it, it put that, like you said, the, the ancient evil is now big corporations. It's not these kind of creatures that come and suck your blood. The blood suckers are the fucking corporations and the big businesses. And, you know, they're really in charge. They're really running the world. And there you go. And that's that's the film, basically. And, so so uh, the Tory party. Yeah, basically. That, 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 entirely <laughs> yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a few vampires up there. For sure. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sucking us dry at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, have you have you guys seen this one? Or I, I've it? I've heard of it, and I think I saw it a long, long time ago. God knows how long. Yeah, I check it out. It's it's again, it's probably not for everybody, but I think there's enough in there for for people to like. I I think I watched it on Amazon or Shudder. It may be on both, um, in the UK anyway. So uh, mm-hmm. so give it a watch if you're interested in seeing the world how vampires would run it. Um, what that about you, really Paul? Good. What I enjoy about this podcast. Dan is that there's always uh, new new things to try and uh, little <laughs> hidden gems that I've never heard of. And I've not heard of this. Believe believe you me, Paul. He always wants me to try new things. I do, I do every time. <laughs> And I have to draw a line at it sometimes. Yeah. He doesn't and draw I, the line at bathing in virgin's blood, but no. everything I suggest, yeah, that's, but that's a bit yeah. too much. It's because I don't want to walk like John Wayne. Right. <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, Paul, what is your second pick on your vampire flicks? Okay, this I feel like I've gone very mainstream, you know, talking to you guys and, and, and your recommendations. But this one, I think, is an absolute classic. Uh, it's one I saw at the cinema in 1996, and going in, I knew nothing about it, so I was I was, I was, I was very much surprised. Should have, the title should have given it away, but it's, uh, it's a film written by Quentin Tarantino and directed by Robert Rodriguez it's from Dust Till Dawn. Another film that spawned a bunch of sequels. Excellent, an excellent film. Starts off as as, as a road movie with, with some uh, very violent uh, criminals on the run, uh, played uh, by George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino. And it's got some you know real real belting cast. It's got Harvey Keitel in there as, as, as a priest, and his, and his daughter Juliette Lewis. And, and, and so they they get kidnapped by um, these criminals who are on the run. We're really quite horrible. It's quite tense. It has, it has elements of Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, a sort of tense nature of that that portion of the film uh, where you don't know how, certainly uh, Richie Gecko, the Gecko twins they call, uh, Richie Gecko is, is, is very, he's, he's off the wall, he's, he's off the rails, he's, he's, he's crazy his behaviour. You don't know how he's going to pan out, they, get, they, they kidnap these guys because they've got to get to uh, to Mexico, to uh, to El Rey. To meet uh, to meet one of their colleagues and, and, and make their getaway. But then there's a twist when they get, get over the border 
And there's lots, lots of twists and turns on the way to that point in the film, you know, where, where you think, oh, they, you know, something's going to go wrong, or something's going to get killed, or, and then and then and then they go, you know, meet, meet, to, meet to this bar, the Titty Twister, um, <laughs> which then <laughs> seems seems like it's uh, it, it, that, that comes back in the sequels and such. But um, yeah, that this this Mexican bar uh, just over the border where they're going to stay overnight and and, and meet their con- yeah, their contact in the morning, and uh, and and so they basically all go for a drink in this bar. Yeah, all, you know, everybody's kicking off in in there. It's it's very again a very tense um, atmosphere, and, and and people want to fight. Uh, basically, there's a, there's, a, there's a twist. The, the, the people in the club are vampires, so you don't see that coming. Um, I apologize if I spoiled that for you, but you probably everybody should have seen this one by now, perhaps. But um, but it, it, even if, if you go back and you haven't watched it for a while, when the twist comes, in, it's, it, it's still it's still fun fun to watch. And and then, and then from there on, it's it's just like a crazy vampire film. It just it just completely changes, it spins on its head, and and you know the, the vampires with it's, it's almost comedic, uh, which is which is fantastic. But the, the vampires are like soft, squishy vampires. You know they seem to be quite strong, but they they seem to get staked quite easily. There's 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 a there's a band playing music with dead bodies. That were the band they were playing musical instruments before before the, the, the everything changes. The vampires, you know, they, 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 they're quite ugly. Uh, they're not a sexy vampire. Some of them perhaps are before they, they change the vampire. Especially uh, one but, of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. One of them yeah, especially. Val Hyatt, probably. Santanico Pandemonium. Mm. Santanico Pandemonium. The soundtrack is, is, is getting great in this film. Got lots of the top on there. It's one I used to have in the car, actually. Um, and, and just some of the some of the props that, that come in and, and some of the things use weapons. The, the mechanized steak machine uh, that uh, one of the brothers fashions uh, as part of part of the we've got to survive the night effectively in the, in this bar. So it's just uh, it's just it's just it's madness. And uh, you know they, some of the stuff they, they do, um, you know, um, water pistol and all sorts of stuff. But um, yeah, it's, I, I'd recommend it to anybody. And you say that there's just there's just all sorts of things in there. There's lots of takeaways catchphrase that come from it as well i guess um and it's got some very some quotable good, uh, yeah very quotable yeah, absolutely yeah it's, um, it's, it's a really good film i agree i agree I, I'm, of, I'm assuming you've both seen it we have uh, yeah I th- i'm sure dennis has i know i have um, yeah i bloody love it i love that it's not even like it's not even like you know like when a film takes a really sharp left turn i don't think it's even a sharp left turn i think it's a complete detour uh, from yeah. what it established. It is a film of two halves, and I do, I would, I, you know what, the part of me would have liked to have seen the full um, Quentin Tarantino first half into a full film. But yeah. then also I kind of wanted, and I guess you kind of get that a little bit with uh, when they did uh, Grindhouse, because we got two films, didn't we, with Grindhouse. And, this is, yeah. and then the second half is very much like a planet terror, like everything's going insane you've got tom savini on the effects you've got uh, fred williamson in, in there the black exploitation icon who gives this great like you weren't there in yeah. there man you know he has a nam flashback scene and it's hilarious and he's got um tom savini's got a penis gun um you know it's it's the best of both worlds like, i love tarantino i love robert rodriguez so it's just a kind of a, a marriage made in heaven so yeah i have to agree an excellent cast as well Sharp, witty writing, um, just a blast of a film, and uh, mm. yeah, yeah it's pacey, I, I, isn't it? It's very, very fast, very pacey, and it's ne- never dull. It's not absolutely, yeah, you know, and you and drag at all when you can put any time. No, there's always something interesting. Even the creepy stuff with uh, Quentin Tarantino and Juliette Lewis and stuff that's quite fascinating in its own weird way. Mm. And uh, but yeah, it is very much two two very different films. But I kind of love both of them, and the fact that they just mash them together. This kind of tense crime thriller, and then this like balls to the wall George Romero Lucio Fulci zombie esque movie is is insane. Um, but yeah, anything else you want to say about it, Dennis? Love it. I absolutely adore that movie with with an absolute passion. Everything you've said, I, I agree with, and I can watch it once a week and still enjoy it and it is very quotable in fact i wonder whether paul could could perhaps say some of um maybe a couple of lines from the movie perhaps when they got up to the titty twister and someone is inviting them in so perhaps you could you know la- i um, couldn't possibly but i know you wish to <laughs> <laughs> i could tell you what 
Well, he's, I'm he's, not, got, I'm he's got it. he's got his wife and child in the building. Yeah, he can't I, be saying he can't be saying things like that. He's he's you know he's a nice guy. He didn't want to do that. He said it last night on the phone to me. He did the accent perfectly. <laughs> did that. <laughs> stop stop putting him in it he didn't do that you know he didn't do that nah, it's, it's, a, it's a, and I, I love the way like the vampires look the same but they also look different um like when you know when a certain somebody turns into one um it looks a bit frankenstein-esque i like the re- some, yeah reptilian almost yeah yeah and then when somebody yeah, else turns into one he looks a bit like a ferret. He looks quite cute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it is, it is absolutely amazing. It's a, it's a, a good, really, really good, good movie. Good thing in it, when, when some, you know, some, of the, um, some of the people that you've got to know that aren't vampires get, get infected along the way. And it seems to change, seems to change quite quickly. And there's, and, and there's quite a few instances of, of, of the, you know, one of them in particular gets bitten and, and then doesn't want anybody to know. So he's sort of hiding it a little bit. And he starts changing very slightly and it's quite it's just quite funny how he tries to keep it all under wraps yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I i like the, the kind of last words in, in the movie with with and it's quite ballsy for Clooney really coming off er to do a film like this yeah you know where he was this nice lovable um pediatric type person um but i, oh, I quite, in this. yeah i quite like the bat we you know when he goes can i come with you and turns around and goes um okay I'm a bastard. I'm not a fucking bastard. <laughs> it's yeah. like, there we go. <laughs> and then but he no, turned no. around and went, yeah, I'll be Batman. And he ruined an entire franchise <laughs> with credit cards and nipples. Yeah. I, d- I don't know if it was entirely his fault, let's be honest. Um, but <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, That's another podcast in itself. Though. Yeah, so let's not go down that. that <laughs> we've still, again, we've still got a lot to cover. So, Dennis, let's rock on with yours. What's your next pick? Well, Innocent Blood by John Landis of uh, an American wealth in London fame. Um, in most, in a lot of regions, Innocent Blood is actually called a French vampire in America. Ah, so, you know, capitalise on the old um, American La- werewolf. Yeah, which was by John Landis. It was, yeah. Um, I, I, I love this film. And I think it deserves a bit more love. I think it deserves people to kind of watch it more. And plus, there's a breast and muff in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> Right, the first Which, minute, isn't it? Yeah, well, not 30 yeah. seconds. 30, 30 I kept, seconds. I literally, yeah. I put it on and I counted. I was like, right, <laughs> I, I know where we I know where we stand on this. Um, I, I, It's gory. It's silly. It's funny. Robert, what's his face? Lang, Langy? Lang, like, Longy? Like, the, the, the old guy. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Logier. Logier. Yeah. Logier. Proper yeah. hamming it up. Proper kind of going in. He's, you can tell he's enjoying the role in it. Um. I, I just love it. And it, it is very much kind of a comedy. And people, you know, it, it is it is a comedy. It's a blacker than black comedy with with, with certain scenes in it. Um, and th- the premise is just basically, you know, there's a, a French vampire. She goes out and feeds, usually kills the person after so they don't turn. There's um, a big mafia deal going on. She gets into a bit of a rumble, bites the leader of them, but doesn't get around to kill him. So he becomes a vampire. And then he wants to, you know, basically get this, um, turn all his, his mates into into vampires. Um, but there's limbs flying off in places. It's, and it's like you say about From, from Dust Till Dawn, it's, you can see similarities with stuff because it is just so over the top. Um, her eyes are, are, yeah. are like glass in it. They're brilliant. So when she's like feeding the change colour, when she's looking at certain other things, it changes colour. Um, and you know, in between all the carnage, there's a bit of a love story going on, mm. you know, which which is kind of sweet, like at the very end, you know. I think the last words in it, if I if I wrote them down rightly, um, was an you know, made made me feel alive oh. for a vampire that's thousands of years dead. But I I love it. It completely bombed at the cinema, made five million off a twenty million budget, um, bit like a lot of John Landis movies. You know, Blues Brothers bombed. You know, American Wealth in London wasn't embraced with open arms and stuff. So it is a bit of kind of this this director that movies come out and then they find their audience on video, DVD, streaming, that kind of stuff. Um, but I absolutely love it. I I, I think I've looked up into it a little bit and I, I, I think the media campaign around it, with it being the next American Wealth in London, I think that damaged it slightly yeah. instead, of, mm. instead of it being stood on its own. Um, and the tagline on some posters were John Landis and in London presents, you know, maybe damaged it a little bit, but I think it's great. All practical effects, 
You know, those yeah. lenses she's got on her eyes that they, you know, they actually put them in. She's great. She's um she's a really good actress, French yeah. actress. She's uh La Femme Nikita. Yeah, La Femme Nikita, yeah, yeah. So she's great. Um, and I would recommend anyone who's not seen it who likes a good bit of 90 1990s silliness, vampire, blood gore. Mm. Watch it. I I love it. I don't know why people haven't seen it. I watched it recently as well. I think I, I might have watched it just before you did, Dennis. Uh, as I put a big list on our message, um, just to see if you guys wanted to just wanted to watch any of those ones. Um, but I I quite enjoyed it as well. I think it was pretty solid. I don't think it's perfect. I think there's some pacing issues, and I think there's a lot of unnecessary stuff. Um, but there was a lot of a lot I liked about it. There was you know I don't think it's perfect, but no, it's it's. It, I think I think it's solid. I think it's it's good. But there was, I just felt there just wasn't, it didn't have that je ne sais quoi for me. But I can see why people would like it. I I think if if you watch a lot of vampire movies, that becomes a bit of a theme. A bit like when we talked about werewolf movies, they can either be absolutely brilliant and and, and nail it, or they can be a little bit like this one, really enjoyable in spurts, and then thinking, come on, go, go and bite somebody else. You know, and I think that's there's a trend with a lot of them. There's very, very few vampire movies for me anyway that kind of nail it a hundred percent. And you know, I think I think I wanted the two lead characters to meet up a bit sooner as well because it's. I think it takes at least an hour or more for them. Yeah, to actually but it's it's, it's cat and mouse, isn't it? It's a bit of yeah, but he's not he's not chasing her, is he? Or she? No, he's chasing the other but, person. But it's it's a yeah. bit like um um, what's it called? I don't know. I just but, felt, yeah. felt maybe if they peppered it throughout their relationship, just you know, little little some things, but it was just kind of like see sees her briefly, meets her later, realizes she's a vampire, and then they're together. She's but, hot though, isn't she? You if vampire or no vampire, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. And and that and that scene, that particular sex scene was a bit was a little bit kinky. It was a little bit. Whoa. It's a little bit. Well, bit, 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 of, bit, of, bit of bondage. Bit, bit of bondage. No, Did you like it, Paul? I did like it. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, the the um, there's a bit just before that scene where he sort of falls asleep uh, and he wakes up and he's like, cause he doesn't know. She, he, he thinks she's just going to kill him or drink his drink his blood. Doesn't uh, something like uh, panicking, but then quickly uh, quickly changes the tone. But the, the, the good thing it's like a, it's a bit of a, you got all the Italian mobsters doing Italian mobster gangster stuff uh, and, and hamming it up really. Uh, yeah, it, in, in that. it's quite it's, it's it's, it's got um, it's got Paulie from the Sopranos yeah, as well. Yeah, who, he's, sad- he's the right hand man, isn't he? Yeah, and he's sadly just passed away, hasn't he? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you if you want to kind of respect Paulie and uh, give that give that film a watch because he is I, in it very briefly. It, I, it's it's good fun. It's one of those movies you can put on a Friday night, have a drink, watch it, and have good fun with it. That's that's why I would say it's a good Ray- fun. It's got Sam Raimi in it. Yeah, no, his his brother's in it. No, yeah, Sam Raimi is in it. He's the yeah, yeah, guy, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. He's putting on this this really bad New Yorker accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's the guy in like the meat pla- packing plant that yes. puts him in the fridge or puts him in the fridge or the freezer. Yeah, that's but it. It's, it's but it's t- it's typical Landis. You know, it's almost a spoof in places, but I love it. And there's no Michael Jackson in it, so it's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. So, Innocent Blood. Check out Innocent Blood. Uh, so, what was it? 1991? 92? 92. 92. So, yeah. And I can't say I can't say blood anymore because of the amount of vampire. I've got blood. 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 Look at, I like blood. blood. I'm only saying the years because all of these vampire films, unfortunately, have basically the same title. It's blood this, blood that, blood this. Or, you know, vampire that, and I'm just like, right, I've got to specify which one is which. <laughs> like, thir- like Thirst, for example. There's, there's, uh, there's about five Thirst movies. Oh, God, don't get me it's, started. Um, mine was yeah. ni- 1979 for mine. Yeah, for, for me, it'd be that one and the Korean one. The rest just don't bother with. There you go. There we go. And, and the it. fact they're free on um, YouTube kind of gives you an idea. They're yeah. released on YouTube. Yeah, this kind of yeah. sort of the yeah. stuff I've tackled before, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, so I'm going to move on to mine. Again, this is a fairly well-known one, but I think it kind of has still a bit of a cult following. A bit like Dennis's, it's a bit art housey, and it is The Hunger from 1983. Tony Scott's directorial debut, Catherine Deneuve, David Bowie, Susan Sarandon in the sexiest, steamiest, 
lesbian vampire film, which is kind of its own subgenre, really, because back in the day, we wouldn't explore those type of ideas or themes, um, you know, in mainstream films. So they had to go, oh, well, if they're a vampire, it's OK, because they're a vampire and they're going to have to suck some blood. So it's not gay. It's kind of not gay. Um, but but it is. It, it definitely is. Um, so, yes, I have to say this is one of the most gorgeously shot vampire films one of the most beautiful i already love the work of tony scott anyway and if this this was his first film and what a debut it's incredible it's gothic it's um it's touching it's depressing it's uh it looks at things like uh, you know sleep youth love um violence murder all these kind of things intersect and it all really works there's a small cameo by willem dafoe as well um and you've got the the other guy from um who is in uh, shock treatment and other stuff it's just really interesting the way they cut between the two like there's a moment where the vampire one of the vampires is attacking someone and then this sleep center are investigating um the this drug they've tried on this monkey and it's reacting and, it, and they keep like really the editing is fantastic in this film but just going between these two two things every time just incredible incredible bit of filmmaking and and I I bloody love it it is basically the premise is uh, David Bowie's character was turned 300 years ago by Catherine Deneuve's character, who was like uh, goes back thousands of years to like e- Egyptian times, and the promise of uh, immortal, you know, uh, everlasting life does not come with the promise of everlasting youth. And he starts to age. He isn't sleeping. He's getting depressed. And it's happening quicker and quicker and quicker. And he discovers that Susan Sarandon is a sleep um, study scientist. Um, and she is investigating the, the link between aging sooner and poor sleep. And he goes to her and she becomes involved and he disappears and then uh, Mrs. Blaylock, he's Mr. Blaylock, she's Mrs. Blaylock, Catherine Deneuve, and Susan Sarandon become entwined. And then the last part of the film is Susan Sarandon uh, becoming a vampire, spoilers, but becomes a vampire, and she has to deal with this uh, thirst, this hunger, the hunger. And she is... It's. I, I don't know if it was done before, but I think this might be the first film with the vampire... Uh, interpreted as an addict, as like a drug addict, that parallel. And it was done really, really well. They don't delve into it too much, but there's enough there to kind of tickle your fancy. I think it's got all the the best parts of a, of a sexy vampire film. I don't think it's that. It's not for everybody. When I was a teenager, I turned it off, I'll be honest. Again, it was quite art housey for me. It wasn't, like you said, it wasn't Lost Boys. It wasn't Near Dark. I needed something. I was looking for something else. And it's not what I got. So I'm glad I revisited it because I bloody love it. Uh, what do you guys think of The Hunger, Paul? A while since I've seen this one. Um, I think I, I think I saw this one as a teenager. I haven't watched it since. Uh, so it's probably one I need to go back to. I, I do remember liking it, but it's, just, it's one of them I, I ever bought, so I've never put it back on. Yeah. I'm going to go right around to it. Um, me and Dan discussed it before, and, you know, when we talked about vampire movies, it is just it's beautifully shot. It's almost dreamlike in, in in certain aspects of it, you know. And even like the kind of sexual type stuff, it's not it's not exploited. It's it's, yeah. it's the way it's filmed. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. And then it is slow paced, but you've got you've little got- scenes where it's proper kind of eighties techno-y type. Yeah, you know, big sunglasses. You know, the the shoulder pads and things. Um, but it is great. It's great. I, I absolutely love it. Um, yeah. I've got nothing even remotely sarcastic to say about it because I think it's a great movie. I, I agree. Um, I would also check out, there's an earlier film which I really enjoyed, which I think owes a lot, uh, hung, The Hunger owes a lot to a film called uh, Daughters of Darkness um, from 1971. If you've seen that, it's kind of the same story to a point. Um, and then again, that's an Elizabeth Bathory story as well. Um, that she crops up quite a lot in these vampire films. You'd be surprised, um, but yeah, I, I think it is the epitome of uh, of what you can do with like an LGBTQ theme. And I think it's the epitome of what a sexy vampire film should be. I, I believe um, absolutely. If you haven't seen it already, which I think many people have, if I'm looking at the comments, um, yes, go and check it out. It is 
something uh, to, you know, Tony Scott's no longer with us. So if you like his work, if you like True Romance, if you like Top Gun, if you like, you know, all the other stuff he's done, you know, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2, that's him. Um, go and check this one out. You owe it to yourself. And just, just go in. And again, don't go in with the Lost Boys mentality. Go in with this kind of art house. And what It's going to be a dream. And it's going to be something that you experience. Um, and not necessarily a, a violent or bloody. It is violent um, and scary in t- at times, but it's not. It's not one that's actively trying to scare you. It more disturbs you, I think. It's more. Uh, yeah. And you do feel sorry for the characters in it. Absolutely, there, there, there is a, an emotional attachment to the, that the David Bowie character, and you know, kind of all that sort of stuff. That you know, without going into any spoilers, but mm. how quickly the relationship changes. So, but no, I love it. I've always loved it. Great movie. Yeah. Again, something different, but uh, but I really, I, I couldn't turn my eyes away. Um, absolutely fantastic film. So, uh, Paul, I definitely recommend you uh, re rewatch it. I need to revisit that one. And it, it, it's very much like, like um, Dan was saying then, it's very much a movie that through different life experience and different things, the, the movie means different things. So from as a teenager, it's just a lesbian movie with, with you know, bits of boobs and stuff. And as you get older, you start seeing the subtext a little bit more. You start empathy, mm. there's a lot more empathy to the movie. You get to look at the kind of shots, the shadows and the, the lighting of stuff. And everything. So I, I think as an adult, I enjoyed it far more than when I, when I originally saw it. And it's, in, it's not just in my, like, top, you know, horror movies. But it's in my top of films of all time that I, that, that I, think, I think it's brilliant. I'm definitely watching it now. Well, there you go. There you go. Rewatching it again. Well, Paul, oh. uh, we're back to you. So, what is okay. the next film we're going to take a bite out of? Okay, right. So, my number three. So, so we've had a few sexy vampires on the trot there, but uh, we're going away from that now. So, we're going to go 2007's 30 Days of Night, which is based upon a, a comic book um, of the same name. Uh, by Steve Niles and Ben Nelson, I believe. Uh, this has ugly vamps in it, so you know it's a, this is a proper horror film, uh, not um, not for the faint-hearted, I believe. Uh, and it's produced by Sam Raimi and Robert Tepper of, uh, of the Evil Dead fame, so you know it's got some some pedigree behind behind it. It's set um, in a in a small Alaskan town of Barrow. We're preparing, preparing for the thirty-day-long polar night. On the eve of that night, a stranger wanders into town. Uh, it's almost, it acts a little bit back to, to Bram Stoker's Dracula, Dracula in, in the way that uh, Renfield comes before before the uh, the main the main vampire. Um, but yeah, this stranger comes into town, a little bit of sabotage. Everybody's trying to get out of out of the town, and then as as night falls, basically a, a, a gang of, uh, of of vampires appears. But I say that they are not. They're not um, messing about. These vampires are just there for the eating. They just want to eat humans. Uh, and so, a small population that are remaining in, in Barrow who couldn't get out um, have to deal with that and try and survive for the thirty long days. And it's just, it's just, it's just brilliant. Um, the way it's, the way um, there's lots of blood in this, and it's in, in a, in a it's shot in a very uh, art, you know, Arctic snowy place. Why it all looks very, very nice. Uh, other than the fact that the vampires are absolutely horrible and brutal, fast, they're like sharks with black eyes. They speak their own language, um, you know, uh, which I think was invented for the film. It's like a series of clicks and 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 and, and you know horrible horrible noises. But the, um, there's a, like a leader called Marlo uh, of the vampires, and 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 some of the stuff they do. To, so it's, they have initial sort of run at the, at the town and 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 and, and eat all the people but then you know as time goes on and, and these people gang together the, the remaining humans and, and try and survive this this period of time that then 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 they, they they use various tactics to, to draw the survivors out um you know and and, and it's because it's dark all the time that you never know where they're going to be so you know they have to make uh, expeditions to go get food and it feels a little bit like the thing as well if you like the thing it's, it's you know very remote uh you know, uh, story a very isolated story. There's a near the beginning of the film. There's the Chekhov's uh, shredder in the Utilidor, which is oh, this thing will eat anything, and you kind of know that's coming back at some point. And <laughs> it goes, the, the 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 hero, the two, the two, the, the sheriff, um, Eben Olsen, by uh, played by Josh Josh um, Hartnett, and his wife Stella, 
play play by Melissa George, and 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 uh, and they're sort of the, the protagonist between them, um, you know, in the survival story, and 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 they got some fairly extreme lengths to survive. Uh, I won't spoil it for anybody, but uh, it, it, it's, it's it's got a unique unique twist in the way that they deal with these vampires and, and get through. It. So I would absolutely recommend it. Uh, this one doesn't have a rocking soundtrack; it's just very atmospheric and uh, and and creepy. Um, and uh, but it's really really good. Uh, death in you know, one, one uh, I think one one point somebody punches a, a vampire through the mouth. It's it's, it's quite bizarre, <laughs> as as some of these things tend to be. But yeah, I, I seriously recommend that. Um, I'm assuming you guys have all seen it. Yeah, I own it. In fact, you own I like it. it. Yeah, I, I like it that much. I actually own it. Yeah, I, I've read the comic as well. Um, yeah. Me too. It really uh, captures, I think, the comic. Um, I, I know there's some people out there, I think uh, Tony Farina, a guest, is is not a massive fan of, of the film necessarily, but prefers the comic. But I, I like them both in very different ways. Um, but I think what you've said there is absolutely spot on. I think it's very atmospheric. It's very serious. There's not a lot of levity to it. Um, but no. but you're supposed to take that situation very seriously. Um, and I lo- as much as I was just saying how much I love uh, sexy vampires, I like ones that are not afraid to be fucking ugly. Nosferatu, big fingers, big teeth, big ears, big head. You know, I love that. Yeah. And and it's it's nice that they have that and they have their own culture. They have their own language. And again, they've. I love again the idea that the sun is not going to come up, so it's not going to. That's one advantage they have throughout the entire film. And and again, the the like you said, what they do to survive, the drastic measures they take, uh, is really fascinating. I haven't seen it for a little while, but I, yeah. I do remember remember really really enjoying it. So yeah, I absolutely agree with that pick. Excellent pick. What about you, Dennis? Well, it was going to be on my list, but Paul stole it. The bastard. Yeah. That's what they call me, Paul the Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> they call you other things as well. Someone wrote on the toilet wall, Paul the Cult. I don't know what he's talking about there, but, you know. The Cult of Paul. No. I love it. It's great. Everything you've said is brilliant, and it sounds weird, but I do like the, the, the contrast of snow and blood. I think it looks kind of pretty. Cool. Right. Great choice. Yeah, we're not going to argue with you, Paul. It's just fantastic film. Uh, but yes, and also I love Melissa George. She uh, cropped up in my top five screen queens a few years ago. I think she's, uh, yeah, I think she's a very underrated actor, uh, especially if you want to see a, some of her best work. I've said it before, but check out Triangle. If you've not watched Triangle, give that a go. Dark uh, City. Yeah, yeah, all that, all that, any of those. Um, Dennis, speaking of yes. dark cities, where what dark corner are you going to take us to next in the world of the cinema? I've gone a little bit left field, in oh, in, a, in in a way. No, it's it's a good it's a good left field. Is it a porn? Is it a porn? No, now? no, 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 no. It's a remake of an amazing vampire movie. And sometimes you look at remakes and you think, oh god, why would they, why would they even try to remake this? So. My pick is Let Me In, which is the remake of Let the Right One In, which is a a brilliant, brilliant movie. It's a Hammer production. Um, It's directed Mm -hmm. by Batman and um, Planet of the Apes fame, Matt Reeves, when he still had long hair and looked a little bit hippie. And it doesn't, it made money, made quite a bit of money, and then made tons of money on on DVD and things. But it's kind of, because I think Let the Right One In is such a good movie. People tend to look down on this, on like the kind of, you know, or uncle that turns up who you don't really want to see anymore um, and that kind of stuff. You know, the, the stuff that, the middle child. Uh, <laughs> so pe- people seem to have a bit of a, a dim view of it, but it's really, really good. The performances are very cool in it. Like you've got Chloe Grace Moretz in it, playing Abby. She's brilliant in it. We talked exactly. about her last time, didn't we? Yeah, and and she's you know she's absolutely great in it. The atmosphere, and what I like about it is not shot for shot a remake, because I think remakes you should do something different. Because what is the point of doing the exact same movie again? So there are there are different kind of things in it, but it basically follows the story um, of a of a of a of a boy, twelve uh, year old boy who's, who's bullied at, at school. Um, and basically doesn't really have many friends who befriends Abby, who's a, a vampire in, in New Mexico. And it's, it's it, to me, prim- it's, it's a love story. You know, even even the, the guy who has to look after her now, 
um because obviously she has she has i don't know you call them familiars don't you um who, who kind of looks after her during the day and makes sure she's okay you know the, she loves him she loves the, the, the kid it, it, it's a, it's a love story and anyone who says otherwise you're wrong <laughs> Because it is, and you can see how how close these these two people get, and how close the kind of you know he's 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 happy to look after her. He's happy. Mm. He's not scared of who she is, and she she sorts out the bullies as well and things. But yeah, okay, the CGI isn't great in it. You know, tree climbing CGI isn't the best, but that doesn't matter because the actual storytelling and the performances. It's very much like you know I went I saw Black Phone recently where there was a lot of children actors in it and the film will die on its ass if those kids weren't great and they were fantastic in it. Very similar to this. It really showcases mm -hmm. these two. You know, just break it in. We've already had kind of like um, kick-ass and stuff like that. This shows that she can act. And the direction, it's just Matt Reeves. You, you, you know by looking at it, you know you know his style, you know, you know the way he does long shots and builds up to things and stuff. So, um, yeah, let me in. Give it, if you've not seen it, give it a go. Because I think it deserves a, a, a kind of little bit more love, and you really, I feel really sorry for Owen, who's a twelve-year-old boy, and he's like, mm. he's like pretty much all of us at some time or another. You know, he's he doesn't really want to get. He wants to be cool, but can't be cool, and you know, the bullies are putting him down all the time. He's he's not the best-looking lad in the world, and all he wants to do is find a friend, find somebody he can connect with, and. I think all of us can kind of relate to that. I think it's, and and that to me is, is the story to it that you just want to find love. You just want to find somebody you can have those moments with. And I think let the right one in and let let me in. It, that's the story. I mean, that's what you say every time you come round at three in the morning when when I've not asked you to let me in, let me in. I told you, Dennis, we're close, we're friends, but we're not that friendly. No, we you, listen. You say go away. Gallon of lube first. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Let me in. There we Let go. Let me right in. There Dennis, we go. Dennis, you're too far in. You're wearing me as a hat. <laughs> anyway. So... <laughs> All the appendages <laughs> covered in lube and every yeah. other bodily Slime fluid. It's sliding backwards and forwards. You know, it looks like a Jackson Pollock if you put a nightlight on there. <laughs> but anyway, but it's it's it is an absolute. I I love them both. So it's I was gonna do the original, let the right one in, but everybody's seen that. Everyone knows about it. I haven't. Feel, you haven't. No, you I've not watched fucked it. Her. I've got the DVD, and I might put it on tonight. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so good. Good. It's, have you seen the original, Paul? I have. I've seen it. I saw them. They came out very close together, didn't they? I felt, yeah. I felt like it is. Well, at the, the time, I think I think I bought them both. I did buy them both, yeah. and I bought well, that one, and then I bought, bought the, re the remake. I think that the right one in it was out a bit bit um, earlier, but it only came out because it's a um, you know a, um, a foreign language movie a lot later. But it's you know it's set in the eighties again, and there's mm. there's this big kind of renaissance of the eighties at the moment, isn't it? With like Stranger Things and um, like Black Phone, for instance, is, is kind of set in seventies, eighties. So there's a big renaissance around that that time. But I, I I love it. I love I love the 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 kind of intricacy of of the love and, and which is which is which is arcing back to Bram Stoker, Nosferatu, mm -hmm. those kind of stuff. It, you know, it, it, at the core of the of some of these best vampire movies, it is a love story. It is somebody yeah. wanting to connect to another, but unfortunately, they they have a disease or they're addicted to. This so it's it, you know story of addiction, story of love, and she's never going to grow old, but he is. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and again, that that comes up a lot in these films: the immortality, the being young forever, never dying. You know, that's yeah, misty eyed. Oh, beautiful. I know, I know. I'm, I'm there for you, Dennis. And you found a friend in me and Paul. It's all right. You don't need to cry anymore. <sighs> Why do you treat me so poorly? Then? I think I treat you better than most. I think. I, I, I put up, I, I tolerate you and put up with you. The oh, you tolerate you bastard! You tolerate <laughs> me. I, I, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. going now. All right, off, off you pop. Oh, I'll, just I'll, I'll just, I'll just finish it with Paul. Escalate quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul, it hasn't. This has been a long time coming. You don't see what he's like behind the scenes. He's oh. very mean, abusive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely abusive. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, he, me. He, he, that's me. That's me to a T. Pins him up against the wall and 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 whispers little things in my ears, but smiles while he's doing it, so people don't know what he's saying. 
stuff like that. Um, that's not true. Not true. No, no. None of that is true. <laughs> this is slander. Slander. Spurious slander. I've got the scars. Well, I will have after this. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, uh, it's back right, to solid, me again. Solid that, ben. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll check it out. I, I want to see. I want to watch the original first. I think. Yeah, uh, that's. I, I, I. If you've not seen the original, watch the original, because then you've got a really good comparison. And the fact is, a Mercury remake. The fact is done by Hammer, um, and the intro a little bit when the Hammer sign comes up is really cool as well. Nice. Um, shows like it's animated of all all the movies and things. So, it's it's just lovely. I just think it's it's. It's 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 a beautiful story, and it is it, love story. Just happens to be with two children. One of them has to be a vampire. It's really it's really it's really good. I was second that, Dennis. It's really really good. And there's, I think there's, there's a really good swimming pool part in the film from memory. Yeah, yeah. And there's um there's also a um a mini series by I think it's Boom Comics did um like a prequel about Abby. All right. About how she, uh, about how she's kind of travelled and stuff like that. I think six issues. Um, you can get it in all good bookstores. <laughs> Very good. Well, speaking about uh, young people and being in love, I'd like to bring up uh, the film that I'm going to talk about as my third pick, which is The Transfiguration from 2016. Um, this is, uh, there's no mysticism in this. There's no, you know, there's no like law or legend or powers. It is a story about two very disturbed uh, children, unfortunately, uh, it's very. This is a very real one. So if you're not quite ready for this one, uh, you know, have a, have a good mental health day because this is a this is a grim and depressing one. However, it is it is a love story through and through, and it is very. It sounds very similar to let the right one in or let me in as well. Uh, we have um, a young uh, young uh, black kid called uh, Milo who is a vampire fanatic. He loves vampires. He knows all the films. He knows all the rules. He knows everything. He is the biggest vampire fan. And he lives in a public housing uh, with his brother, who is a former uh, veteran. And he is in a, he's got like PTSD depression. Um, and their parents are no longer there. They either walked out or they died. I can't remember exactly, but... He's and Milo's kind of the sole person who goes in and out of the house. His brother never leaves the sofa. He lives on that sofa. Um, and the whole area is really bad. It's a really rough neighborhood. There's a lot of gangs and things like that. And he meets this girl, Sophie. She um he's he starts, he believes he's a vampire, first of all. And he is actually killing people. This 14-year-old boy is going out and killing people and drinking their blood because he believes that he needs to. Like once a month, I think it is, he, he's drinking the blood. So he is going out and he's killing people, unsus unsuspecting, you know, uh, people that are just, you know, wouldn't expect a child to come up and stab them and drink the blood. And he meets Sophie and she, she he becomes interested in her because she's, again, it's, it's very dark, very heavy themes and stuff going on. She cuts herself uh, because she's been abused, like by her granddad and by various other people in the community. So it's this very dark love story. Um, but they start bonding and hanging out more. And then, you know, Milo shows her a disturbing video of lambs being slaughtered. And she's like, oh, I'm not quite sure. I think you're, you know, he's like sociopathic, basically, I think is the best word to, to use. Um, he's not quite right, let's put it. But as the film goes on, they get closer and closer and they understand each other before more and more love. And his need, he feels his need for blood uh, start to like dissipate. And he thinks it's because Sophie's in his life. And again, I won't, I won't say any more on it, but it is, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. And again, it's very rare that you see a vampire film from a from a, a black or African American perspective. It's mm. like even you know, obviously we have Blade and things like that. But even now, if you look at like the hundreds of you know straight white male vampire films, as opposed to like you know things from the black or African culture, you know it's very very rare that you'll see that. So it was really interesting to see that and see this story and that take. Um, but I highly recommend it. It's probably probably the most obscure on my list, I think, out of all of them. Um, but I think it's an absolute must-see. Go on, Paul, follow that. I don't know if I can. Uh, it's, again, it's one I'm not seeing. I picked that. 
five vampire films. It, you have to be another one. I haven't seen. Have I seen any of them? <laughs> of course you have. I, of course you have. I, I, I go. Out, I, I go out of my way, guys, Joke. to to I'm pick. Joking. Yeah, I go out my way. This is my thing, you know. I've, I've said it before. I go out my way to pick the ones that you've probably not seen. Um, so don't worry, Paul. You'll get to them. You'll get to them. You just write it down on the list. <laughs> add it to the I list, like, Cap- like Captain America. Just add them to the list. But uh, that's why I go out of my way to find these because I, I oh, want. It sounds, to... it sounds like a sounds like a good one, you know. It's I, I I watched it um, because Dan watched it. He put it on his um, Facebook. That he was watching it. It's uncomfortable in places. Yeah. It's very kind of like because it is so real. Yeah. It's almost think, like a mockumentary in places. It's like I think if you have children, it's probably a bit worrying or a bit sensitive. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I think I that's why I was saying it's it's a it's quite dark. Some but of it, the, the things that the children are experiencing mm. or involved in, it's very, very dark. If like I said, if you're not in a good mental health day, probably not the best film for you to watch. Because no, no. it is very real. It is based in realism, so very visceral, viscerally real. Mm. Um, so I can I understand. Think that's, I, I think that's what's the, the most disturbing thing about it is the realness of it. Mm. You know, it's it is it's one of those movies, a bit like the one I said, you know, um go walk. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone to watch. Yeah. I liked it. I was in that frame of mind to watch it and stuff. It was not one I would say, you know, go and watch this. Forget your Underworlds. Go and watch this one instead. It's, yeah, it, it's not your Sunday night viewing, but I, I like. No. I, I don't particularly like watching films that are quite depressing or, you know, like people are like, how can you watch all these horror films? And I'm like, the real horror films are the ones about unemployment, homelessness, depression. Those are the films. Coronation my- Street. Yeah. <laughs> Underworld uh, from Coronation <laughs> Underworld Street. again. Yeah, <laughs> Bring it um, in full circle. Okay, full circle. But yeah, like, I, but I think if you're in a, in a like, I, I wouldn't recommend watching The Woodsman, which is Kevin Bacon as a paedophile. Oh, it's a great movie. It, it is a good movie, yeah. but I wouldn't recommend it to people because it's no. fucking real dark and depressing. And yeah. I think this is in a similar vein, but it's it's not that far on the, on the scale of where The Woodsman is at. You know where you where you're meant to identify with the paedophile in the film. You know, um, I don't think it's it goes that far, but I think the fact that it is children adds something to it that you wouldn't necessarily have seen if it was two adults. But I can understand absolutely why it would not be everyone's cup of tea. However, I think it is a must see. And just I remember being asked, "Would you recommend The Woodsman?" I was like, "Um." What's it about? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Go and choose something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like me and my friend, we were like, we, we heard about it, we talked about it a bit. And one night we just said, should we put it on? And then we both sat there in silence for two hours and, then, and like squirming uncomfortably and like, bleh, you know, crawl, our skin's crawling and everything. And we were like, yeah, I don't think I'll ever see that again. Uh, thank no, you. thank you though. But it was it was an experience, and it was a good film. But it's not something I will revisit. It's like Requiem for a Dream. You don't go back to that. <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> Definitely never, not. Never will I return to that film. But uh, but yeah, check out the Transfiguration yeah. again. Bear in mind all the things we've said. But I, I think you should uh, give it a go. So we're, we're we're back to Paul again. So uh, okay. So we're slowly draining ourselves of blood as we we come to the end of our lists. So Paul, this okay. is this has to be a foreign language, um, a three-hour spectacular, um, dark, gritty. That's going to make me and Dan go, oh, don't want to watch that. Yeah, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, it's not that. <laughs> what it is is uh, a bit of levity after maybe Dan's choice. So, and, and you said there's an 80s renaissance. This is 80s. This is from the 80s. This is a film. I was, I was quite surprised because when I was a kid and I watched this, it came out in 1985. My dad had got it on, on video. And he said, me and me mum watch this. I think you'd like to watch this. Okay, put it on. Um, and it's Friday Night. Friday Night, the original Friday Night. Tom Holland's Friday Night. Not, not Spider-Man Tom Holland. Um, yeah, so th- this one is, um, has, has been remade. And I, and I recently watched the remake and, and thought, oh, that's brilliant. But then I went back and I was doing this list, went back and watched this one because I've watched it loads of times and thought, mm, yeah, this is it. It's full of practical effects um, and full of cool one-liners. So this is a story of, of Charlie Brewster, uh, who's a, a teenager, and there's a house next door to his house where he lives alone with his mum, and his house suddenly moves into it, 
and he's, he's with his girlfriend in the in the bedroom, and, and his eye gets he gets distracted. He's into the vampire film as well. He's, he, he's this, his TV's on the room, and there's all his vampire films on, and there's this famous vampire hunter who's, who's in these these ongoing serials on the TV. He comes back into it, and and so and so he, he starts to suspect that his his new next door neighbour is a vampire. Uh, and it, and again, it moves at some pace, which we I like. It's not it's not drag at all. Um, he's got a friend, Evil Ed. Uh, they call him Evil Ed. He's Ed. He, he, he's quite a character in it as well. So the three of them at school, and 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 his friends, his girlfriend Amy and Ed, who think he's losing his mind because he, he he's he's coming to school saying, "Oh no, my next door neighbor's a vampire," and his mum won't listen to him, and 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 he thinks he's going crazy, and then and then it turns out his neighbor is a vampire. Uh, and and you know, and, and the vampire cottons onto the fact that he knows, and, and it sort of escalates very very quickly to the point where within I think the, within the first twenty minutes, he thinks he's going to get you know you think he's going to get killed or his mum's going to get killed, you know he's, he's into looking into vampire law and all this stuff turns his bedroom into a church effectively, and 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 then again the love story comes in because uh, this this vampire who's who's called. Um, Jerry, it's called Jerry, Jerry Dan, Jerry the Vampire, which is such Jerry a good vampire. name for a vampire. Um, <laughs> Love it. He has a familiar as well. He's a familiar who's just moving around to the day, so it kind of throws you a bit because you know people don't suspect him as a vampire. But people, people, he's bringing girls to the house and they get they're going missing and his body's being buried out the back and all sorts of stuff. So Jerry the Vampire becomes he's, he's a bit of a, a bit of a hunk. He's, he's uh, um, Charlie's mother likes him and invites him in the house and. Every sort of doesn't believe Charlie, and and, and but it sort of uh, yeah. So he very quickly comes comes out that he's a vampire, and, and then starts hunting Charlie and his friends to, to sort of shut them up, silence them, so he can get on with living in the suburbs and eating people. And it's got some real cool eighties soundtrack. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a great scene in, in a discotheque. Uh, discotheque, that's the word, isn't it? Um, so you know where 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 uh, Jerry seduces. Um, Charlie's girlfriend and, and takes her away. Charlie goes to see then this 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 uh, Peter Vincent, uh, who's I think it's, it's, Roddy McDowell. It's a, a mix of Peter Cushing and Vincent Price. Yeah, yeah, Roddy McDowell uh, of Planet of the Apes fame. Uh, and he's really good in, in this as, as Peter Vincent. Um, and it, but it turns out he's, he's, he's just he's just an actor. You know, he's got loads of props in his house. And he go he goes, you know, Charlie goes to him because he's a great vampire hunter. And he's like, oh, I don't I don't believe in vampires and. and him up. It was a real cool. So, so his friends to try and calm Charlie down. His friends then hire Peter Vincent to come back to the vampire's house to to basically, uh, you know, prove that he's not that, not a vampire. And and he says, uh, you know, uh, and and he speaks to the vampire and, and he sets it all up, Jerry. And and he goes in and he says, "I'll bring some holy water. It's just just tap water. It's just tap water. So it is just tap water." As they go in, and he gets the vampire to drink this in front of Charlie. Everything's real. You know, he's saying, "Not a vampire he's drinking holy water." That proves it. And then uh, Peter drops his his, uh, his looking glass on the floor, a bit of mirror shard is there. Uh, for, um, oh, it's right, it doesn't work that way. He looks in the mirror, notices no reflection, uh, no reflection, drops the mirror, and it smashes on the floor, and then, then quickly hurries the kids out. And then, it, again, it escalates again because then the vampire realises that even Peter Vincent knows he's a vampire. Uh, and it all ends, there's a big showdown at the house. Um, again, lots of special effects. I don't want to spoil too much of that. There's, 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 there's some 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 real uh, real fun effects uh, I make, but and, and, uh, I, I just recommend it to anybody. Really, it's really really, really good. Uh, it has a great exploding vampire, which is which is fantastic. And and I say, Evil Ed has some great great lines. You know, um, you're so cool, Brewster. He's, he's one of them, uh, which comes comes up again and again. There's a real good bit where uh, where, where the vampire, you know, the, so the law comes in and, he, and he's afraid of crucifixes, but you have to have faith for them to work on him. And uh, and 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 Charlie, sure, he has a little crucifix and it works. But Peter Vincent has no faith; he's faithless. And, he, and 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 the vampire just sort of it's full of real cool iconic moments. I, I I would watch it. The remake is great, um, but they, they they make everybody you know hunky and stylized, and it's and again it's in modern day, and, and they got mobile phones, and it's you know the vampires are a lot more gruesome and and, and, and faster, and it's is ramped to eleven. But this 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 is this is just fun. Well, um, Dennis introduced me to Fright Night. Uh, <laughs> so uh, See, that's so, where your acting chops come in. That. <laughs> they, that this is it. So it comes up every now and again. Comes in very useful. Um, I have to agree with Paul. I think 
it was it was one of the films I, I was ashamed I'd slept on for so long because I thought it was fantastic. The effects, uh, and you know how much I love Rear Window, and it's basically Rear Window yes, with a vampire, is. isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, you know exactly. Yeah, and and that, and obviously there's a lot more to it than that, but that's the initial premise. That's the idea. He's, he's got to prove he's a murderer. He's got to prove he's a vampire. You know, and I think that that just that that starting point is interesting enough. That's kind of cool, and you know, he finds his way in his room and stuff. I like you said that it's so unashamedly eighties. I love it as well. It's so cheesy, and the effects are great, and. And you know, I, I absolutely adored it, uh, and I thought the remake as well was was good in its own way, uh, and it's in a more modern, you know, way. You know, you could say Friday Night is a little bit dated in some respects, but mm. I I quite ad- admire that, and I like that about it. Um, and yeah, I, I had so much fun with it when I watched it with Dennis. Um, I, I I don't know. I think I watched that alone, and I think we watched a remake together. I think, um, but yeah. So uh, Dennis is a big fan. What what do you like about Friday Night, Dennis? I like the fact that Joe the Vampire goes to a nightclub wearing a jumper. <laughs> I can't even go to work in a jumper at the moment. It's that you know, fucking hot. He's he's there, this hot, hunky guy. All these people around him in their shirts, and he's there in a woolen jumper. He's got style. He's got style. I love that coat he has. That like yeah, with the big collar, like very very eighties. I, I I, the sequel's good as well. The original sequel's good. You know, it kind of yeah. starts a few months after the the other one finished, it, and it is is like a retelling of the original movie, but it it's still good. It's I, you know, it's mm. it's got that kind of the the same sort of feel to it. And going back to an early movie, yeah, he may be hunky and this, and that, but when he turns into a vampire, yeah, he's a little bit ugly, isn't he? With his long fingers, yeah, and massive <laughs> teeth, and yeah. you know, even when you know. A, fee- a female turns into a vampire. It's like massive, t- massive grin, isn't it? It's like Matt, it's huge like this- mouth. Yeah, it's and it's it, yeah, and they're all practical effects and everything. It's, I love it. I think it's great. Um, I, I've got the documentary "Too Cool for Brewster." Um, <laughs> I, I bought the special <laughs> edition. Um, so yeah, I'm. I am. I think it was one of the first vampire movies away from Hammer that I actually watched. So it has a very special place in my heart, like yep. a steak. It's, I think it's a stone cold classic. So, absolutely another excellent choice, Paul. Um, so, yeah, Dennis, number two for you. Okay. So, imagine 1920s. You're filming Bram Stoker's Dracula, but you're told that you're not allowed to film Bram Stoker's Dracula because it's copyright. So, you can't do it. So, you go away and you decide to make a movie called Nosferatu. The issue is the um, Max Shrek, who is the vampire Count Orlock in it, is actually a real vampire. Hence, Shadow of the Vampire, ah. which stars um, John Malkovich and Willem Dafoe and Eddie Izzard. And it is absolutely a masterpiece of filmmaking. It's it's like a, I think they call it a metafiction. So it's, it's, it's based on real life things, but then they've inserted little bits to make it a bit more bit more fantasy so it, it basically just follows the, the the john malkovich who's the director making nosferatu um it's and also on the side note it's produced by nicholas cage oh. who's funny enough playing dracula in renfield yes he is so see it's like a box of hamsters in it um <laughs> and it, it it's it's so it is shot in kind of like I think it's, it's shot on um, Kodak. I think it's 9.8, which means it's faster, which is what they would have shot them, you know, similar to what they shot the, the movie on. Count Orlock, the Willem Dafoe character, is absolutely amazing. He's almost like a spoiled little child in it. You know, he wants his own way. There is there is a bit of a bit of a backstory to it. You know, he's lonely. He's been promised certain things if he if he does the the, the role. But unfortunately, because he's a vampire, he still likes blood. So, but there's, he, he's just so, he, he, he's, every scene that he's in, he steals, but every scene that Ed Izzard's in, same sort of thing again, you know, they just, they just, it's almost like a masterclass of acting. John Malkovich is amazing in it as a guy who, who slowly goes insane making this movie um, and can't, it, the connect between fantasy and reality just disappears. It's all one thing to him. And, and, it's, I love it. I, I I sat down with Amy and watched it 
um, and she loved it as well. She thought it was great. And it's the same sort of thing again. You, you have a bit of sympathy for for um, Matt Shrek, who's you can't. All, you have a bit. Of, he's been promised certain things. He's been, you know, he's he's been manipulated, and through the movie, he discovers, he realizes that, yeah, I'm being screwed here, but <laughs> I'm the vampire, so you know, I, I'm gonna do stuff. And there's like scenes you just there's there's a bit where they're all chatting about things, and this bat flies on, and he just grabs it, rips his head off, and starts eating it, and they're all like, oh, um, he's always in character. That's how they kind of, yeah, but it's he's. It, and because he has his long fit and he, he's, he walks around with his hands up to his chest like that. he's always doing he's always doing like the um, <laughs> Burns thing like that from Simpsons and I just love it and I, I saw it at the cinema one of the only it was on was on a very kind of small release in the cinema went to the cinema instant and it's one of those movies because of the way it's shot and the historic watch it on a big screen because mm. it is beautiful even inside the like the, the castle and the stuff that they make up for it and yeah, the ending's the ending's great as well. The ending is is, which you know is the ending of the of Nosferatu is the ending of that movie, apart from one little like little twist in it. But I would highly recommend if no one, I'd watch Nosferatu the 1921, and then I'd watch Shadow of the Vampire because it's almost like watching the making of. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's so good and it's funny. It is it's really funny in places, but it is. It's almost like who can outact each other in it, um, and it's 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 just really, you know, this this is like Willem Dafoe and John Malkovich at the height of their powers, kind of thing. You know, off the back of other of other movies, you've got Eddie Izzard who's showing that he can act and stuff, and he plays um, the Renfield character in it. Um, so there's little bits of that in, and they they shot the scenes from the movie exactly like the film was shot originally apart from the fact they changed little little aspects of it so like when Renfield cuts his finger and um, Nosferatu is supposed to kind of look at it and go like you know he doesn't he starts eating it <laughs> you know and, he's, and he gets told off he's like a, he's like a naughty school by go oh sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> that kind of but it, I love it it is absolutely fantastic go watch it if you've not seen it I haven't I haven't so I, I will I haven't seen it I, I love Willem Dafoe. I like John Malkovich. So why the hell not? Definitely. Yeah, no, it's 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 an acting masterclass. And the last ten minutes fly by because obviously the climax of the filming, the climax of the movie, and you know that oh, it's brilliant. I, I really, I wish I could tell you the ending because it's really good, but I'm not going to do because it will ruin it. Go and watch it. It's great. Right? Uh, did you say I haven't seen it, Paul? You've got nothing. No, I haven't seen it again. I think I've seen. Little bits of it, and for some reason, didn't, didn't I don't know whether I just caught a bit of it. It was on TV, on terrestrial TV, and didn't watch the rest of it or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, go ahead and see the start of it or something. But I've seen I've seen bits of it, but I need to see the whole film. I think, I think, well, I, th- I, I, I think it, it was bought by Film 4. I think they distributed it in the UK. It's a Lionsgate movie, but I think Film 4 um, distributed mm-hmm. So I think it has been shown on, you know, when they used to, have, they used to show proper movies on Film 4. Yeah. I think it's been yeah. shown on that. So, yeah, it's 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 great. It is really great. Cool. Uh, right. Well, I'll go on with my pick. Uh, back to the seventies now. Uh, we're going with Kolchak, the Night Stalker from nineteen seventy two. So this, at the time, was the most watched television film ever on American TV. Uh, it is basically the story of a Las Vegas reporter who is, he's very grizzled, but he's not jaded at all, but, and he, he tends to piss people off, but he has to get the truth out there. You know, that's his thing. He's dedicated to finding the truth and making sure people know about it, that nobody's pulling the wall over anybody's eyes. And he starts investigating this very cold lead, this bad lead, he thinks, that these editors just giving him. And it turns out it's a, seri- it's a serial murderer, a serial killer, He's offing people in very unusual ways. And guess what? The serial killer is a vampire, he discovers throughout the course of it. And he starts putting the idea to the police, to the politicians, to the mayor. It's a vampire. And they're like, don't be ridiculous. You're an idiot. You're just looking for a story that doesn't exist. What are you doing? And he starts to get so engrossed in this, he starts hunting down 
the vampire who never speaks in the film. We very rarely see him. Um, it's it's a very 70s looking film. Like it does look like a 70s TV film. However, the writing is incredible. Uh, it's uh, Richard Matheson rewrote the script, a uh, big C- sci-fi writer, horror writer. Um, and uh, he just, he brought an, a realism and a groundedness to all of the characters. You could believe these people exist in real life. It's uh, it's so unique and there's this, just every situation he's in, they're like, oh, here comes Kolchak, he's going to mess with you. You know, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to trick me into doing something or pay me off. But it's all in a, obviously he wants the money, he wants the fame, but also he, and you know, he wants the book deals, but he does want to do the right thing. And it's a really fascinating, it's, it's kind of better, like the vampire is quite minor in it, in a way. It's quite a minor thing. It's more about this world that they create. And, and this actually was kind of the precursor for the X-Files and shows like that, those kind of supernatural yeah. procedural shows, you know, a very real, you know, lived in world, but with one supernatural element, one, you know, mental element. And and I thought it was fantastic. I have to thank um, Tony Farina and James Aquilon, who I was on a podcast with recently. They did a, an indie comic spotlight on the Comics in Motion feed. And it was all about Kolchak, the history of Kolchak, uh, his TV series, the sequel to this, The Night Strangler. Um, and and they brought out like a, a 50, I, I don't know what it was, it's, you know, 50 years of Kolchak or something like that. And uh and it was, you know, a graphic novel that they were they were uh, funding. And uh, yeah, I have to I have to thank them for finally. I knew about it, but I hadn't been given that push to watch it. And I bloody loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, check it out. It's very seventies, so if you're not into that, it's probably not for you. Um, but if you can appreciate good storytelling, good writing, and some great acting, um, go and check out Kolchak, the Night Stalker. What have you have you guys seen this one? Have you? Uh... Yeah, it's 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 like. Dirty Harry with vampires, with with the vampire type stuff. It's that sort. Of, it, it feels very much like that. Yeah, it, um, it's a very yeah. small scale story, but I like yeah. sometimes like. A oh, small I think story. it's great. I think it's a very personal personal story. Yeah, um, it's, it's like bullet. It reminds me of bullet. It's like oh, one. Bull, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. One man has a goal. Uh, one after one guy needs to get it. It's very you know straightforward. Not many twists and turns, but it's done so well that you yeah. don't care. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, uh, that one is on YouTube as well. So you can check that one out along with okay, the night. Send me a link to that one. I will. I definitely Please. will. Yes. Send us a link. I, again, I've not, not seen it. I was aware of the cold check influence on X Files because I love X Files and read all sorts of stuff about that. So, but I never watched any. Never watched. Right. Well, now now's the time. Now's the time to watch some because uh, if you like X Files, you will like Cold Check, I think. And I think it's a it's a very big rabbit hole you can go down because there was a series as well, and obviously yeah. an, another film as well, The Night Strangler. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. Go check it out. Go check out the podcast I mentioned as well. Um, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Wow. Um, right. Comics in motion. Yes, comics in motion. Good guys. Good good fellas. All of Definitely. them, and and the ladies as well that are involved. Mm. Brilliant people. Yeah. All brilliant stuff. Anyway, uh, Paul, is this your final one? I believe. Right. So uh, then, okay, my number one then. Um, Drum roll, please. Right. So now, now, now we're going to the nineties, nineteen ninety two. Oh, my era. Um, yeah, and I saw this film first of all at the uh, at the Roxy Cinema, which is my local cinema. Um, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, it just I think it had a certain, I don't know atmosphere that the, the rocks that you don't get at the, the, the standard multiplexes now so which i think je ne sais watching, quoi. yeah they're watching yeah. this film it's like, it's like when you when, when you when you stand up you know the seat's still attached to your ass you know that kind of stuff nice they're thick spongy they spongy ones yeah yeah um, you, you sit down your legs fly up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. old school yeah so this this is uh this is uh it's a nice one, actually this is francis ford coppola's bram stoker's dracula <laughs> Oh, that is, that is a mouth. Well, I mean, I mean, Dracula <laughs> always takes a mouthful, so so I, I will allow this. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I guess it's, it's another take. Cause there's been a number of them uh, on 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 the book by Bram Stoker. Um, it's is your sexy vampires. Uh, this is an Oscar-winning movie, so this is not your cult classic. I don't believe. Well, maybe it is these days. Um, and and so it takes a lot from the book, word for word, in, in a lot of instances. Uh, again, I, I reckon I've watched this about 30 times. Um, he, he 
he's, he's, he's had a, he's Gary Oldman as Dracula, who's an absolute standout in this. Um, Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing. Um, he's just he's quite funny. He acts like the Dutch Van Helsing quite quite well, quite funny. Uh, you've got Kaylee Reeves as an English bloke, which yeah, the accents are a little bit dodgy. Uh, I think you got a bit of stick for that. Um, and you've got you know um, who else is in this? Um, Keanu Reeves. Speaking of speaking yeah. of accents that get a bit of stick. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I'll I'll, this, exactly. I'll I'll do you my version of it. Um, I know where the boss sleeps. In Carfax Abbey. Yeah, Carfax Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my you know that's my Keanu you know Reeves. <laughs> it's like it's brilliant. Yeah, Jonathan Jonathan Harker. Like I, I like Keanu Reeves a lot, but in, in this film it is quite atrocious that accent. Um you got Monica Monica Bellucci as one of the uh, vampire brides. Um uh Winona Ryder, obviously. Yeah. Um, so you got um uh, Winona Ryder as Mina Harker. Um, you got um, um, yeah. Richard E. Grant as, as as Jack Stewart. Oh shit! Um, yeah. Billy Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Billy Campbell. Yeah, Tom Waits as Renfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he's yeah. quite a creepy as well. So yeah, yeah I think the, the thing about this one is it, it's all sort of uh, practical effects. Again, I think Coppola didn't want to use any CGI in, in this film, so it's um, you know it's all practical effects and and the way. Because it's a lot of it's from, like read from a, from various diaries and journals, and the way the book is, and as it transitions from one scene to the next, it's quite fluid and quite unique. It's sort of you know the, the scenes blend one to the other. And he uses things like uh, images of, of sort of blood, or uh, it, it just the way he cuts the scenes together is quite it's just quite unique. It's hard to describe really, but it's, it's just visually uh, you know a, a treat to, to watch. The soundtrack is, is is really good, and I think has been ripped off on a number of times or used reused on, on other films for sure. I think the film itself has been has been a mimicked in, in a number of things. I think it was on Simpsons and uh, and maybe uh, I think I've seen a comedy film and I absolutely blatantly ripped it off. I think there's a Leslie Nielsen film, but um, oh, yeah, uh, so, uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It. Because there's parts in it where 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 they, where they go to the castle uh, where in you know. Now and goes goes to uh, Dracula's castle and and, and, he's, and he's talking to Dracula and Dracula's doing one thing and then a shadow on the wall behind him is doing something completely different, throttling him and, and all kinds of stuff. So he's got your sexy va- brides and vampire uh, of, of Dracula. Um, I think the book is quite slow. I'm, I'm reading it at the moment. It can be quite slow, but this moves it on at quite a pace. Adds the sort of uh, lore of, uh, of Vlad being paler into the storyline. So this is how he became Dracula. Adds that in and, in, and ties it all up in a nice love story. I think the tagline for the film was like, love, love never dies. So, so it is a love story. Uh, very gothic. Um, but yeah, re- really, really good. Totally, totally love the film. Um, and I think it spun off a lot of Comic books at the time. There was there was those comic books came out of the back of, of this film. Being yeah, I think I think Mike Mignola of Hellboy did one. I think it's actually on yeah. my floor down there. Oh, is it? I've actually got it. Yeah, it's there. You can see it. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, yeah. So Gary Oldman as Dracula, because really, he's actually an old old as old Dracula, an old man if you like. Um, as 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 in the, and then he grows young uh, on 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 the Demeter, uh, and uh, and again he, he becomes this this. Uh, Bit of a sexy vampire, then in, 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 when he gets to London, and starts wreaking havoc on the, the locals, and on Mina Harker, who's the love interest. So yeah, I, I really you know what, Paul, you know what, Paul, your number one is incredible because, like, every, everyone's got their t- their vampire or their Dracula, haven't they? They've got their version of Dracula. Mm. This is my Dracula. Like, this is the like a lot of people will have, you know. Bella Lugosi, everyone will have, you know, um, Christopher Lee, but but Gary Oldman is my Dracula. Like I grew up with that. I love the costume design is incredible. I love, like mm. you were saying, some of the shots and the the com- composition of the shots. I love that one where the train's going through Transylvania and you can see yes. his eyes in the in the sky, uh, in the yes. background. Um, again, it's got an amazing cast, like you've already said. Um, it's got. You know, the se- it's quite sexy. It's quite the uh, obviously that reincarnated bride thing t- seems to crop up a lot in in Dracula stories. I don't know if it. it, it does. Probably, I'm sure it probably happened previous to this film, but I feel like after this film, it was in almost all of the films that Dracula's ever been done in. Now there's some sort of kind of love story. Like, is a, there's a blatant love story instead of like sort of seduction and the sharing of bodily fluids, that type of thing. Um, I remember when I was very, very young, the poster 
for Dracula. It's like a it's like a marble stone carving sculpture, and the mouth is yes. bleeding. Like I didn't know what the fuck that was. I was too. I, I don't know how how old was it. What was it? Ninety three, two. Ninety two. Yeah. yeah. So I probably would have been like two. So what? So I would have been four. Um, and I yeah. I I remember that. <laughs> I remember that poster because I, I, I just it just stuck with me that design, um, and then obviously when the film came out I watched it. But that is that's like ingrained in my like early memories that that film poster because it was just so it it so it like something I'd never seen. Obviously as a, like a four year old child or however old I was when I saw that poster, you know that that was so iconic. And Gary Oldman's great. I like everything you've said. It's a it's a gorgeous film. The costume design, the makeup. Um, I love just the little moments, like you were saying, like like when uh, Keanu Reeves cuts himself and he's he's licking the razor and like yeah. just little weird and freaky, creepy moments like that. And like you said, he's an ugly vampire and then a sexy vampire. You get the best of both worlds. Uh, I like spoiler, but I like when he feeds his brides a baby. Yeah, which is, yeah, which is in the pro- book. it's proper yeah. fucked up. It's proper fucked up, and it and it happened in the BBC show as well um yeah you know it's it's part of that and and i, and I like that they went there you know I obviously don't show it graphically or mm. anything but the there it's heavily implied obviously not even i mean you see him hand over the baby don't you but yeah and that design with the weird kind of boob head um i'm going to call it um is <laughs> as, as weird as it is it's proper unique um but yeah a, excellent choice paul what a what a cool There's only one one, one bit on a, on a, on the re on the recent rewatch I did there seems to be something odd going on with Keanu's Keanu when, he, uh, when Jonathan Harker comes back from Transylvania he's had his experience with, with Dracula he, he, he's had some sort of breakdown and he, his hair goes white or, or grey oh yeah uh, and, 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 and and it's just there's a whole the end of the film the the, the, tra- the travelling to, to Transylvania to try and beat Dracula back to the castle before he can get in there but the scene that scenes that cuts it and and his hair, some some scenes it's sort of just black or just off black. Some some it's like like a really white. It's, it sort of took me out of me. It's something gone on there. I don't know whether that was because it's been tra- you know restored or whatever. I don't know. It seemed very odd. It's feathered and functional. That's all you need to know. <laughs> it, re- it reminds me, you know, Evil Dead Two when you when you get when he gets the white streak. Ash gets the white streak in his hair because yeah. he's so scared, and then it's never in Army of Darkness. He doesn't have it in Army of Darkness, so what's the point? Uh, so there you go. Uh, but yeah, Dennis, how, how do you yeah, feel about Bram? I love it. Um, I, I'm a bit obsessed with it, if I'm honest. Um, I've got FE format. It's ever been released on. My my dad bought me um, on, on VHS in a coffin in a box. coffin shaped box. Yeah. Yep. With the video in, and you get a badge at the bottom with this on it. Um, I've got recorded off the TV. Um, a special for um, the South Bank show, and uh, and after that, I had a making of, so I've I've still got that, and wow. it's really really interesting to kind of look at Gary Oldman's process, um, how to get into the character. And he, in one of the things, he sat there looking at looking at pictures, and um, someone asks him, "What are you doing?" So I'm, I'm I'm getting in that emotional state because most people only kind of feel this way once, you know, lose love once in their life. Because mm-hmm. I have, and this this helps me get there. And it was he's it, proper emotional, and it's it's. Mm-hmm. I also like the fact that what's he called Van Helsing's a bit of a dick as well. You know, he's yeah. he's he's as evil as Dracula, really. At least Dracula's quite open about it, where he's a bit kind of behind the scenes with it all, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and perhaps a little bit rapey, maybe. Um, it's implied, isn't it, a little bit when they're in a little dance round. Yeah, it's a bit, so it's a bit weird. Some some of the yeah. stuff. I don't. It's, I don't think it's a perfect film, but I think. There's a lot to get out of it. There's a lot to enjoy. I think it's very visually strong. Um, yeah, I think that I think it's it's very stylish and he's, you know, the miniatures. There's there's no even trying to hide the fact the miniatures. You know, you can tell the models, and that's that was done on purpose. You I know, know. I, I know, I know. This is probably one of the more uh, faithful adaptations of the book as well. But again, even they don't do it exactly the same as that book they add a few moments i think there's a bit more sex in it and stuff uh, but yeah i i think it's uh, an excellent excellent choice yeah. i think it's one of the only ones that they actually kill him correctly in it i think it's one of those ones that they, they actually you know get the get the count the way it's written that's good we won't spoil it obviously um other, other than yeah <laughs> it's yeah. dracula for other, Christ's sake. Other, other than dracula dies guess what <laughs> he dies um right <laughs> uh dennis what is your final pick 
Okay, just I just need to clarify something before I say my last. I've not done these in order of what my favorite movies are in this top five. I've just kind of just this one I've chosen because it's absolutely fucking trash. It's it's a movie that you watch and you want to go and have a shower afterwards. It's just it's dirty. It's it's the actors are questionable, but it's a John Carpenter's vampires. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> I've not seen it for some time, but remind me. It's, what... it's not aged particularly well, um, but I don't care about that. It's just kind of so over the top. And now I know more about it, you can see certain things in it, such as James Woods, for instance, ad-libbed most of his lines. He had a deal with John Carpenter. They would film one scene, I was written, and one scene with his own lines in there. Um, it's gory. The, the vampires aren't particularly pretty in this, and they live underground. How cool is that? Um, the, 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 it's all to do with the Catholic Church, as always. You know, if it's if, if it's not choir boys, it's vampires. You know, it's one or the other with them, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so they they basically um, back in the day created the, this head vampire. He's the he's the source, and he's gonna he's trying to find this this cross in New Mexico to make him so he can walk through, you know, a day, basically. The, the the scenes are over the top. The Padre in it, it goes from a wheeling little kind of weasel to like Rambo <laughs> in like in like 20 minutes. It's great. You've got B-side Baldwin in it because he couldn't afford Alex. So we get, we get B-side, um, but he's fine in it. You know, he's, he's but yeah. it's just like, I, I actually watched it the other day and I sat here thinking, you know what? I love this movie, but for all the wrong reasons, it's not particularly well written. It's not particularly well acted. You know, it's just, but I loved it. I, abs- I absolutely love it for all the completely wrong reasons. And I was saying, saying to Paul the other day when I was chatting to him, James Wood beats up this vicar type person. And then he's in the car driving around. And he goes, um, Padre, can I ask you a question? And he goes, yeah, go on. You know, when I was um, kicking your ass back there, he went, did you get a little bit, did you get a bit of wood? Did you? Did you like it? Did you get a bit? Of... It's like, <laughs> where's that coming from? And then... that's that's coming from James Woods. Yeah, that's what and, that's. And at the from. end of it, at the end of it, you know, he's he's fighting this massive vampire, and he's that's the only thing he goes. You know, after five thousand years, can you still get it up? You know, does the old boy still work? <laughs> you your penis obsessed, but it's it's so over the top. Like the, the, one of the first murders that this vampire does, he basically cuts a guy in half with his hand. Which you know, come on. Takes a take a vicar's head off with his hand. What more can you ask for from a vampire movie? You've got it's not particularly sexy either. There's, there's the lady in it who's a, who you know is quite sexy, but it's great. I love it, but it's not it's not a masterpiece. It's not Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> you know, it is just absolute trash, absolute vampire trash. But I love it. I'll have to I'll have to revisit it because I I'm sure somebody else has mentioned it in the comments. Yeah, um, it's just it's it, and you know the, there's a double cross and he's called Jack Crow. What a cracking name for for, for like you know a slayer. Do you, when you say double cross, do you mean he's holding two crucifixes? I'm not even going to credit that with an answer, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> You're just being silly now, aren't you? You're being silly for silly sake. I'm just raising the stakes. Oh. Well, oh. <laughs> Don't worry, anyway, it's, it's almost over, boys. It's almost yeah, over. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not going to, again, like a lot of my movies that I've chose, it's not one I'd recommend unless you really want to just like eat lots of popcorn, talk while it's on, and just stop when all the murders are happening and then carry on chatting about something else and then watch it again and just see James Wood being a dick throughout the movie. Um, but apparently he got on really well with John Carpenter. Yeah, it's it's unusually he gets on with anyone, James Wood. Yeah, but, yeah, because uh, he is he's a bit of a bit, he's bit a of um weirdo creep oddball. A, I'm gonna say renegade. That's that's a word for it, I I, I yeah. would say. Um I probably if you like James Woods, I probably wouldn't look into him too too deeply. Um but no. anyway, moving well, on. Yeah, watch, give it a watch and don't watch the sequel with John Bon Jovi because it's absolute wank. Sounds like it is already. <laughs> All right. My <laughs> final pick. Speaking of trash, um, Netflix and Amazon in recent years have been shitting out vampire movies left and right. 
in the last two or three or four years, yes. just sh- shitting them out, just shitting them out. I watched a few of them. And this was the first one I watched, and it was the best one I watched. And it's called it's on Netflix, so it's available now. It's called Blood Red Sky, and it is a German film. And imagine Air Force One meets 30 Days of Night, and that's the kind of film you've got. Yeah. You've got this, uh, this German lady, a woman and her child. She is on the plane because she has a blood disease, quote, unquote, blood disease, that she's looking to... Uh, uh, fly to uh, wherever they're going, I can't remember, and get a doctor to look at her and possibly cure her of this blood disease. And she's trying to protect her son. She's very overly protective of her son, but as she would be. Um, and she has these drugs that she has to take. Uh, it takes a lot out of her to take these drugs, and it keeps this blood disease at bay. And uh, all the while on the flight, uh, we get introduced to all these characters, and then all of a sudden, Dominic Purcell of Prison Break and of uh, of the Legends of Tomorrow and the Flash and all that sort of stuff. As he comes in and he's like, hey, I'm a terrorist and we are going to hijack this and you are all going to be our hostages. Sucks to be you. And while they're doing this, the lady in question, um, I think her drugs get destroyed, I believe, or she loses them. Uh, I believe she gets she gets shot, I think. And then it's it's revealed that she is actually a vampire. And throughout the film, we see flashbacks of how she got this way. Um, you know, she had a baby. She's trying to eat her baby, she's growling at her. And she's all the while trying to contain this, this infection because it's getting worse and worse and worse. But then she also uses the vampire infection to fight back and to take control back of the plane and land it safely. It is an absolute thrill ride. Again, it's got English language and German language, so there are there are subtitles. So if you struggle with those, don't bother. Um, but I thought it was great. It was a lot of fun. It was emotionally really grabbed me uh, from the get go with this this story of a, a mother and her son. And again, we get a woman being an ugly vampire, which I like. I like that we you know it doesn't have to be uber sexy all all the time. You know this very visceral Nosferatu looking uh, and she slowly starts to infect other people on the plane as well. So it almost becomes a bit of a pandemic movie as well. Terrorist, vampire, pandemic. It's all, it's all happening in blood red sky. Um, And it was the most watched German film on Netflix ever as well. Uh, And I can see why, because I think it is bloody fantastic. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, it's fantastic. There we go. There we go. (laughs) <laughs> Love it. You know the Dominic Purcell guy, wasn't he? Didn't he play Dracula in Blade Trinity? He did. Uh, Drake, as he Drake. Liked to be like to be known in that film. That's, that's what I think of him. <laughs> that, that's one film that never was going to make any of our lists. But it does have the best insult ever. Cock juggling thunder cunt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. No, it's a, it's a great movie, and, and I think you've summed it up really, really well. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's so- it's fab. It's on Netflix right now. I also These... think what's good about it is you don't know what you get. There's not a lot of stuff on on the synopsis about it. The, the, the cover doesn't really give you anything away. So it's nice just to go into it blind of what joy you're I about ex- to watch. I did exactly that. I didn't realise it was going to be a vampire film. I just thought, oh, that looks a bit... I just threw it on and it was, uh, yeah, it was really good. and Surprisingly good. Yeah, quality. When, um... as, as, it, as it unfolded. I, mean, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I've I've probably I've probably ruined it for people by just even talking about it slightly. Um, I should have just said watch Blood Red Sky and just left it at that. But um, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think yeah, because I think there's loads 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 there to unpack in that film. Oh, so much you haven't, um, you haven't touched on. No, I don't. I don't, and I don't want to. I think go go ahead and try it out. Um, it's very. I think it's only about an hour and a half. It's very brisk. Yeah. Um, you will not be bored. Promise. Um, it's heart wrenching. It's fast, frenetic. It's interesting. There's some like politics in there and stuff. And and I I, I loved it. I genuinely. It was one of the first ones I watched for this for this uh, for my research for this. And I couldn't have been happier with that choice. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. So we are almost at the two-hour mark, and we've made it to the end. We did it. We did it. However, yes. we've still got uh, some honourable mentions. I believe some of you guys have some honourable mentions to mention, uh, and we've got a lot of comments to get through. So uh, so if you just want to reel off your honourable mentions, we'll go Paul first. 
Okay, okay. I'll read it. It's just, just some something I've, I've, I've caught up on recently. I've just not, not made this list because there's just so many. Dateland, uh, Interview with the Vampire, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> fun. Crazy CGI, but great fun. Daybreakers, Frostbat, I saw recently. Uh, and Jacob's Wife is one I saw recently. Uh, and then my favourite, as we know from last podcast, Salem's Lot, Near Dark. You've been on a podcast recently talking about I did. Near Dark, and that's just awesome. It is, yeah. To go and check out a Femme on, Femme on Film uh, podcast. Um, did that with Rhea, who's been a guest on my show yeah. as well. Uh, go check all of the stuff she does out. Again, she's on Comics in Motion a lot as well. Uh, go check all of the good stuff out that she does. Um, I, and she will be in the comments coming up as well. Uh, Dennis, any honourable mentions for you? Yeah, but he stole them all again like he stole my 30 day a night. It's just so why I always just... let him go first. It's not. It's not on, Paul. You know, don't forget, I know where you live. You do, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do what I threaten. I'm going to, I've got your comics here. I'm going to cut out one page in each one, one panel, and just somewhere within the comics. Um, I, I kind of look at kind of the movies like Nosferatu and even the remake of Nosferatu Vampire, um, which is great. I, I obviously, Dracula, a Hammer, mm. you know, all the horror of Dracula, the house of Dracula, depending on what planet you're on. I, you know, for me, Christopher Lee is is Dracula. I just love love, and that was my kind of ba- baptism into kind of horror movies. So all those Dracula movies kind of have a bit of a special place. But yeah, he's he's coming to like Lost Boys and the usual stuff, the usual kind of things that kind of pop up. I love Interview with Vampire. I watched it recently with with Amy again. Um, she loved it. Mm. Cracking lines in that as well. Very quotable. You are a killer, Louis. We could so do a dishonourable mentions, all the shit ones which are out there. But we're not, because we're a positive podcast, aren't we? Yes, we do try to be positive when we can, if we can, <laughs> about certain things. Um, maybe don't catch Morbius, uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you loved Morbius. You, you know came what? Out, it you was came not... out and said it was 100 times better than Iron Man. You know what? I would wait for it on a streaming service or for renting. I probably wouldn't have gone and seen it at the cinema, which can't now anyway, even after the re-release. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's not horrible. I've seen a lot worse. Let there be carnage is worse than Morbius. I will say that. Oh, for Love and Thunder? Oh, actually, yeah, probably worse. Yeah. Really? Yeah, probably worse, yeah. I think. Uh, Go with that too. Again, no spoilers for Love and Thunder, but it, let's just say it's uh, not what I wanted out of a sequel to Ragnarok. <laughs> Anyway, I will just list off some of mine very quickly. Uh, Death by Temptation, which is a trauma film with Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, Vampire's Kiss with uh, Nicolas Cage. Oh, excellent. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's brilliant. Again, he's not actually a vampire. Or maybe he is, who knows? But it's one of the most wackiest performances and, and, and so good, it's so bad, it's good movies you've ever seen. Um, uh, Vamp, I'm going to recommend as well. Yeah, Vamp was, was I, I forgot about Vamp. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. Grace Jones is a, as a, as a kind of vampire, head of the vampires and a stripper as well. Uh, really interesting. Very much in the vein of kind of Fright Night and those kind of films. Um, this next one I really uh, liked is Bit in, from 2019, which is actually a transgender vampire film. Um, so I won't say any more about that, but go and check that out. It's really interesting, really well done. Um, and really like, you know, it, it, it tackles kind of sort of transgender stuff and intersectional feminism without it being all about that, you know, like a, a Black Christmas remake or something like that. Um, but yeah, really good. And also Eat Locals, I thought was fun. Again, it's a bit like there's a bit of dog soldiers in there. They're all in this little uh, cottage um, and they're all being hunted down by soldiers. It's kind of the soldiers on the outside, the vampires on the inside, and they've got to fight their way out. Amazing cast, Charlie Cox and uh, um, loads of the people, loads of the great top tier actors as well. So yeah, excellent. Check those out. So, listener comments, guys. Here we go. Here we go. So, Angry Andy Reviews. So, at Andy underscore review on Twitter. Uh, his top five is Blade, Interview with the Vampire, Let the Right One In, Kronos, and John Carpenter's Vampires, brackets, It's Awful, But Brilliant. <laughs> I'll go with that, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've got a you've got a you've got a fellow fan there. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up is Tonya Todd. That's at Ms. Tonya Todd on Twitter. 
great. Uh, so they, she was talking about Andy's choices. So great choices. I had to knock off a few of mine off that list. Um, since top five is subjective, I went with my five favourites instead of the best. Only Lovers Left Alive, Blade 2, Bram Stoker's Dracula, I Can Get Past Keanu, uh, which uh, Andy said he couldn't. He loves that one, but he couldn't get past Keanu. That, that should be the tagline, not Love Will Die, I Can Get Past Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Hunger and The Lost Boys, and she said it hurt to leave out Underworld. So a lot of our choices in there from Tonya. Mm. Craig Higgins, which I believe is a friend of Tonya's, because uh, she put our uh, retweeted my tweet, um, his pick. So he's at uh, C-E-H Higgins author. And, his, and my picks are John Carpenter's Vampires, James Woods' Sadistic Vampire Hunter, <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula, almost a horror, Hammer horror film, 2011's Fright Night remake set in Vegas, Blade 2 because of Guillermo del Toro, and Interview with a Vampire featuring my old friend, Lila Hay Owen. Oh. So you know somebody in it. So thank you very much for that, Craig, and thank you for commenting uh, for the very first time. Uh, my friend Max Byrne, who I went to see Morbius with, says, Morbius times five. Jokingly. He's saying it jokingly. Uh, his actual <laughs> top five are Near Dark, Blade 2, Fright Night, What We Do in the Shadows, and Let Me In. A lot of crossover with the, uh, with the listeners here and our choices. So I like that. So Rhea Kerrigan, as we mentioned earlier, hmm, just five. So she goes near dark, and everyone should listen to the podcast on Femme on Film uh, about us talking about near dark. Uh, Byzantium, What We Do in the Shadows, The Hunger, and Let the Right One In. So uh, I, I almost did Byzantium. Yeah. Byzantium, yeah. Is that a good one? Is that one you Yeah, it's great, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Not to worry. So my biggest fan at I am Jack's musings. Uh, I had forgotten he'd already given me his top five. So he came back and he went, yes, I did. I already did it because um, I asked him for it again. So he's gone, let the right one in. Near Dark, What We Do in the Shadows, Night Watch, and The Lost Boys. Uh, Mike at Genuine Chit Chat. So that's uh, Mike. Uh, so that's at Genuine Chit Chat. Uh, in no particular order, Blade 2, Daybreakers. Blade One, let the right one in, and I am legend. If that counts, if it doesn't, then what we do in the shadows. But I do prefer the series. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the vampires in in I am legend, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't care because the film's shit. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that was that a bit blunt? I do. Yeah. It's, it's been a tough week. I do apologize. I I, I, I you know I do. I am sorry. That's all right. Um, we, we, it's been a lot. It's been a long podcast. We're almost there, Dennis. Just a few more comments. We're almost there. We're almost made it. We've almost made it. Uh, I'm. I, I'm also feeling a bit drained myself this week. So, uh, pun intended. Uh, right. Um, Fuzzy Dunlop on Instagram. So that's Fuzzy Dunlop underscore one says, "How many Twilights are there? Too many. I think there are five. <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we also." My wife and daughter sat upstairs watching Eclipse. Are they right now? Yeah, yeah, right now. There you yeah. go. There you go. That's the best one. I think it is the best one. Yeah, horror. It's, it's done yeah. by the director of Thirty Days of Night. Nine. That's why I liked it. And yeah, it's uh, a horror movie. And you can check out my podcast with Lucy and Scott where we talked about Twilight, all five of those films. Uh, I'm not going to go over it now because we need to finish. Um, so Alex Nahar, so that's A L X N A H R R said, uh, what we do in the shadows, also the Lost Boys. And the very last comment is from Hale Leviathan, who I did the Obi-Wan uh, Kenobi YouTube series on the Attention Seeking Geek. Again, go and check that out. Uh, he uh, said, the Lost Boys, Fright Night, Blade 2, The Transfiguration, uh, let the right one in, and he's a big fan of Boys from County Hell, which I also very much enjoyed. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, almost made my list. I, I like the Irish, the Irish likely lads uh, uncovering a vampire's tomb and having to fight it with construction equipment. Uh, <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, check that one out as well. So, guys, that's it. Congratulations, we made it through. <laughs> lots, of, lots to talk about, lots to unpack, and we didn't have as many technical issues as we did last time. So that's something. No, we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. No dogs barking. Either. 
No dogs <laughs> barking, no Zoom um, subscriptions coming to an end, no bad Wi-Fi, really. Is- uh, we've we've managed it. So uh, thank you very much for, for bearing with us and doing this. Again, excellent idea, Paul. Um, you know, I'm glad we did the Stephen King one first because that annoyed Dennis, so I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so, so I'm glad that we did one he actually did like as well. Right, lots of things. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. And and, and Paul still got to mention uh, Salem's Lot, and we talked yeah, we, about Carrie and stuff. The, the poster for the remake of Salem's Lot looks ace. It yeah. does look good. Yeah, it, it looks look really good. good. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So. Let's hope. It'll it just be like fire start. It'll be shit. There'll be a twist, twisted, twisted fire starter. <laughs> so, uh, so guys, I know Dennis is on social media, but Paul, you're on. I will be. Media. I will be on social media soon. Okay. Okay. Because, as you know, we've got a little project. Mm, we've got something in the pipeline. We've got something soon, so which we need to. I will be on very soon. I definitely need to get cracking on with something. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing, but I know I'm supposed to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> you're weird though i've got i've got money Can't wait for that one. I, I hold i hold i hold money for something yeah you got, uh, you got a box aren't you with receipts yeah. in <laughs> little, bo- little box of receipts let's call it that um but but paul you're on uh social medias you're on uh, uh twitter and instagram specifically uh, do you want to tell yeah. people where they can find you yeah so on tw- i'm mainly on mainly on twitter uh and it's at the mela geek that's where i hang out most of the time on social media uh, and a little bit on instagram at the paul mela um so that's, that's me but thank you for having me on the show again yeah. my pleasure paul I, I know we didn't get uh, time to do much of an introduction but um but it's been fantastic and you've you've given us some amazing choices and I again the, the listener choices were fantastic some of the uh some of the absolutely yeah. Amazing. yeah i have to, after after thank all the yeah. listeners because they really got this i think this is the most maybe the most uh listener comments i've ever had on the podcast so i'm really glad everyone liked the topic and really got stuck in there um mm. excellent choices all of them are very very good all excellent excellent choices same with the ones apart from dennis's trash one um I, i'll be honest like I, I don't know if it's uh i mean it did come up in the the comments quite a bit it's, it's just it... We all need a bit of that shit in our life. Yeah. You know, it's, it, and it is just like, stick it on. Brain out. You've had a, sh- you've had a yeah. yeah, you've had a, you've had a shit day. You stick it on and you watch people having shit it is and you, and you feel better about yourself at the end of it. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, that whole, that whole sentence that you need a bit of shit in your life. That's why I hang out with you every so often. So, you know. Oh, you're that? such a dickhead. And uh, before before I, I I we go, um, just want to point out that they are doing auditions for Nosferatu. If you if you're up for it, I mean I've got the look. I literally was cast as Oberon in Midsummer Night's Dream, and they went, "You're going to be Nosferatu," and I went, "Oh, big fucking surprise!" The guy with the big head and the big fingers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a really good picture of my wedding. My brother was bald, and he's coming out of the of the doorway, and all you can see is his is his bald head and a and a hand. So he's called Phil, so we nick- nicknamed him Nos Philatu. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I don't think we can top that. I don't think we can top that. But uh, you can find me on my social media at uh, Facebook. It's at Secret Balls. Twitter, it's at Dan underscore Balls. Um, Instagram, it's at Spider Dan Secret Balls. Review, like, share, comment, subscribe, etc. And don't forget to use the hashtag Prepare for Prattle when you interact with us. If you want to join the Pratalian and be briefed in full on the Secret Balls, swing over to Prattle World at www.spiderdanandthesecretballs.com. And also, if you want to check out that Ozploitation YouTube video that I made, that I mentioned earlier, do go and subscribe to our Patreon. Like these lovely people, I am Jack's Musings, Paul Meller. Max Byrne, Scott Hodgson, Simon Cotton, Mike Byrne, and Angry Andy Reviews. And thank you guys for your continuing donations. It is very much appreciated and helps Brattle World keep on turning. And if you ever find yourself in a position to help the podcast, please consider it. Um, yeah, thank you again, all the listener comments. Uh, I know we had to rush things at the start, but we had a lot to get through. And I didn't want this one to be another four-hour uh, <laughs> feminist podcast. Uh, I don't want to do that again. The feminist side was all right. The four hours, maybe not so much, but it's still good content. Go check that one out as well. Um, but thanks, Paul. Thanks, Dennis. You guys have been fantastic, and this has been a wonderful topic. Thank you, all the listener comments as well. They were equally just as good. I love you both. I love you, Dennis. I'm only mean because I, I love you. I know. I know you'd lash out at the person closest to you. I understand you, dickhead. Love you. Love you, Dan. (laughs) Love you, Paul.
Bye, dickheads. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>